Hey, we're live. Hey, happy Wednesday evening. Or if your name is Helen and you're living in East Gippsland, Australia, good morning. Good morning to you. I hope you're enjoying your coffee and your croissants. Helen, that's awesome that you're uh, you're chiming in. Um, Going to have a great uh, live stream tonight. So yes, it's true. I have Nick Lewis coming on to join me in a minute. And uh, I'm really excited about that. And um, so just one second as I get set up here. As always, um, please leave your uh, comments in the chat. Um, let me know where you're watching from and all that other kind of stuff. I see all kinds of people on already from BC. All right, cool. Karen Winston's here from Atlanta. I know Helen's here and I know that Terry Joe Scott's here. Carol from New Brunswick. Cool. Um, so yeah, just make sure you say hi and in the chat. And of course, any questions along the way as uh, Nick and I chat about interior design and kitchen design, please leave them in the, in the chat. And uh, one of us will take that on uh, tonight as we go. So I'm going to bring Nick on and uh, say hello, and we'll we'll jump right into the content. And um, hopefully, 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 uh, this is going to be amazing. I have no doubt that it will be. There's Nick. Hello. Hello. How's it going? It's going great. Good. Um, I'm super pumped uh, that we had a chance to meet today earlier and chat mm -hmm. uh, as. Um, it's it's thanks to this community, like I mentioned uh, earlier today, that they um, they gave me the the, the, the push to say just just ask Nick. I'm sure sure he'll, sure he'll go say, for it. Yeah, uh, say yes. Send a and, DM. Uh, why not? Yeah. So I, is that is that how you slide into someone's DMs? I don't even well, know what that means. That but... may have a different connotation, Mark. But, so. um, <laughs> but I'm gonna. Cool. I mean, it made sense. That's exactly what you did, and okay. I am here, so it works. So right. whatever you need to do. Um, I, I live in the woods in, in Atlantic Canada, so. Yeah, whereabouts are you, by the way? Are you in, where in, you're in Nova Scotia, right? I am in Cape Breton. Cape Breton, okay. Cape Breton I don't, I've been to Halifax. Okay. Yeah, I Five went for a wedding. Away. Yeah, oh, wow, five hours? Oh, my gosh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, then I don't have as uh, many, <laughs> many references to my time in Halifax that are going to be relevant to you because I never went yeah. to Cape Breton. No, but, that's cool. Um, Anyways, but Halifax is beautiful. I love Atlanta, Canada. I think it's great. Yeah. Went to PEI. Oh my God, stunning. Oh, PEI is nice. So yeah. Cape Breton's like PEI, but more hills. Oh, okay. Do you have any? Do you have the red dirt like they do? Do you have the? Uh, no, no, no we don't have red bowls, dirt. Unfortunately, probably less chickens, but um, <laughs> we have the infamous Cabot Trail. Okay. Um, and actually, in some magazine somewhere, Cape Breton Island was rated the third most beautiful island in the world. So. That's it's a tall order, so that's good. Yeah. So I don't know how that they determine that. Yeah. Um, I can think of anywhere else tropical that would be more beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say there's a lot of beautiful <laughs> islands out there, but but it's a it is for a you, great, great, great place to live. Um, yeah. So we chatted earlier today, um, and we're just going to talk about that. So just to give everyone watching kind of a bit of background, so I reached out to Nick, and we had an opportunity to chat today. Um, and I recorded it, just a bunch of stuff, some questions about uh, some kitchen related topics. I know, um, Jackie, if you're on tonight, we'll definitely get into your specific quandary. And Jackie, you're still my moderator, by the way. So hopefully you're on tonight and you can kick out all the spammers. Um, but when you hear uh, Nick's answer to the question, don't don't kick him out of the live stream or ban him from my channel. <laughs> yeah. As your moderator, you got to go easy. So. Yeah. Um, well, this is, I mean, am I going into safe waters here? Because I know you have a barn door and maybe other people in your, your are do your followers, are they all barn door lovers and they're ready to burn me at the stake or do they want to hear me out? <laughs> they want to know your opinion on the OTR, which we'll get to shortly. Right. That That's yeah. the real big thing. And, you know, we'll talk about all, all the other kind of specific kitchen Ask uh, topics that, and, and maybe some other ones that just come up. And of course, if you're in the chat, just definitely put a question there. If you have a question for Nick or myself, and we'll do our best to to answer. And um, hey, Jackie's on there. Hi, Jackie. You're you're the moderator. So, um, and if you're watching on a device where there are uh, no buttons, you can't use your thumbs. Just wave at the screen, scream at the screen, do whatever you can, and we'll uh, we'll know you're out there. Cool. Raymond saying he's been a subscriber for about a year. Oh, thanks, Raymond. Cool. Awesome. So let's let's uh, let me ask you the first one, and and, and we'll get right to this because uh, everybody on my channel mm -hmm. knows um, about 
uh, this particular thing, and, and we chatted about it quite a bit on the channel. That's the OTR, so the mm -hmm. Old Range Microwave. So um, give us give us your thoughts, your opinions, and we have a volatile crowd um, when it comes to the OTR. Oh, I have to weigh in. Uh, yep. The over the range, you know, it's funny. We briefly talked about this earlier. We actually mostly talked about like insider YouTuber gossip more than anything, <laughs> like what it's like to be a YouTuber. We didn't, but I would say um, you ignited a fire in me around how I feel about the OTR because I never really gave it a whole lot of thought. Obviously, your people have, and it's a hot, it's a hot topic. I just think. I'm really curious to hear what you have to say, because you're more of like, well, you're a kitchen designer, right? So this is like, you know, I mean, I talk about a bunch of stuff on my channel, but kitchen is just a sort of one of many topics. Mm -hmm. I think that I don't like it. I think it's dated. I think it's dated advice to put it, and it's just such a wasted opportunity to right. use that space, which is just such an opportunity to create a focal point in your kitchen. It's such an opportunity to play with like, I love a statement hood fan. Um, you know, you could go for something minimal too. Like mine is just very, very simple and clean and easy and whatever. It's like a, just a Mila like hidden fan. Like it's really, and then it's hidden. The, the the venting is all just hidden behind some some panel cabinetry. And I like that. I like, but I also really love a statement fan. Like I think that's what I'm going to do in my next home. Right. And I just think putting a microwave there, like, I don't know. I just feel like a microwave is just so old school. And like, this is, I don't know if you're noticing this trend, but a lot of people just aren't putting microwaves in at all. Like they're just, right. just taking away microwaves completely because you don't need yeah. them. Or if they have the space, which was, I mean, ideal, they're putting microwaves in places that are a little bit more inconspicuous because I love mm -hmm. paneling everything if I can. I'd paddle every appliance that I possibly could, to be honest with you, unless it's like a really cool, funky one, um, which a microwave never is. And so if I could hide it in like a butler's pantry, I would. I even actually have seen a, a definitely common, becoming more common now is to hide it in the island, right? Because there's so much electrical being run through that island mm -hmm. anyway, that hiding it, again, it's not the most ergonomic choice because, you know, you're going down to like get your microwave because it's hidden in an island. But... People aren't using their, you know, they've got steam ovens and stuff now for a lot of these new right. builds or these rentals. So they're not even really using the microwave as much. So like, why not just kind of hide it? Yes, it's not the most ergonomic best choice to put it in the island, but I think it's the most aesthetically pleasing because you're kind of hiding it, right? Like yeah. when you look at your big statement kitchen, you're looking at your gorgeous kitchen, it's like hidden underneath the island and you can't usually see it from the front um, rather than your range, which is probably hopefully beautiful you know or nice and, and even if it's not i mean it's you know it can be it can be and then the hood fan area i mean it's just such, such a great opportunity to to have a little bit of fun there and i just think a microwave is just like not the best and it's like it's it's kind of also probably it's way too high to be put up there anyway i don't like it i don't like the otr no move the microwave somewhere else get rid of it or get rid of it completely Jackie's heart just broken. Jackie, oh, you kind of knew this was going to happen. Yeah. And and <laughs> this was by no means uh, a way to team up on anybody because uh, everybody already knows my opinion on, on the OTR. And we joke about it quite a lot on, on especially in this platform on the live stream. My biggest issue, of course, is just that it's it's kind of high. It generally doesn't look the nicest, um, in my opinion. And yeah, I like the, the island idea. That's, I, that's where I have mine is in my island. We have like like an oven door style uh, mm -hmm. microwave so it's it actually a or well no it's not a drawer no, but it's, it's, out. it's, it's just out. an oven door yeah so the, the thing opens up which is mm -hmm. and we don't we don't use it hardly ever and like I, I had mentioned earlier I um tell clients don't don't design your kitchen around a microwave it, it you know because th that seems to be the sticking point for some people like where am I going to put this thing and if that is your approach, then there's there's something wrong. Like, where do I have, where am I going to put this thing is means maybe you shouldn't have it. Maybe you should get rid of it. So, yeah, that's kind I mean, of my better, I mean, However, you know, and you're, you're really kind of locking yourself in. Yeah, I don't know, <clears> to this being such like a, an essential focal point. Like I see, you know, get rid of the microwaves. Okay, why hide the microwave? Has it been a bad boy? Yes, yes, it has. Because, you know, it's kind of older. Tech. Like a lot of people don't use them as much as they used to. Uh, yeah. that's that's just the reality and going forward i don't know if they necessarily will and they're not attractive you know not it's not all about the aesthetics of course no, no. the function matters but i think if you have a, a place that you can hide it if you have one not, fine yeah. you know it's not the worst sin in my design sin in my world i'll be honest but like you know if you 
if you can find a place to you know, hide it, minimize its impact because it's not aesthetically all that pleasing or even get rid of it or store it somewhere like an appliance garage, huge fan of the appliance garage right here. Mm -hmm. Like if you can find a place to hide some of these things that aren't as attractive, then I would say maybe go for it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I personally would rather hide it. Bonnie saying, I put a microwave in a drawer. OTR doesn't work for short sure. people. I use my microwave as an extra burner daily. Some people do use their microwaves still quite a bit and that's, yeah. that's fine. And if it's, totally. if it's something that you have to use, um, I always say that if you have to have an OTR for the purpose of just having a microwave, do, do your very best to have it vented outside. Like that, that's, mm. if nothing else, make sure that it's vented because, or any vent hood, because you can get just recirculating hoods, but the whole purpose of that is to move air out, out of the house. And so yeah. I think, um, you know, that's, that's like my caveat to that is to say, just make sure it's vented if you absolutely have to have one. Mm -hmm. um, what, what if I may ask is, and maybe we should bring Jackie in, uh, what is the logic behind why people love the microwave over top of the range? Like, why is that? Why do people love that? What are the biggest advantages? Counter, Back. counter theory. <clears throat> So back when I was designing kitchens uh, in the in the early days, in the uh, in the early two thousands, um, of course you just had a microwave shelf and that was the thing. And then just all of a sudden, this appliance came on the scene, and you you could combine two things in one. So you could have a range hood and an, and a microwave, which mm -hmm. was like wow, you could you could save space because mm -hmm. now you're not taking up a pantry or countertop or uh, uh, you know, a, a cabinet, a wall cabinet. So you could, you could save space, which is definitely yeah. a benefit. Like I know yeah. Jackie, we, and we talk about Jackie's kitchen all the time and Jackie's got thick skin and we joke around, but she doesn't have a lot of space for a microwave. So it's, it's a space, hers is a space saving OTR and it's the, probably the best place in her kitchen for it. So it, it that works. So these, mm. these things came on the rise and all of a sudden they're just popping up everywhere. It's like, the next big thing yeah. and before you know it it's like the ball is rolling and it's, it's out of control i mean i was i was putting otrs in every kitchen i designed for for a decade mm. just because that's what you did you yeah know? that was it was a lot more it was a lot more popular i think that you know if it may as is always the case with everything it's, it's always whenever i'm on you know whenever you're on youtube we have to speak in generalities because you know remember that remember that we're trying to serve an audience of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. So trying to provide yeah. very general advice for the general public. And it's not always, the advice is not always going to make sense for yeah. every single person, right? So I can say all I want, like, ah, I hate whatever, but it might work for you and it might be your style. And that's totally cool. It might work for your space. Obviously I yeah. can't give advice to um, that kind of specific level of when that might make sense for you. But as a general right. rule, it's not the most attractive of appliances. There's other places that you can put it if you have the space and the resources to be able to do a renovation or a, um, you know, or, or you're doing a brand new build or whatever, then I would yeah. consider it, you know, putting it somewhere else. I think the island's yeah. a good place if it's a small to medium sized kitchen. If your studio, if you're doing, if you're like Shea McGee or whatever, and you're doing a, a whole butler's pantry and you've got electrical and the plumbing and all sorts of stuff working into a different area of the kitchen or another room entirely in a, in a butler's pantry or something, then yeah, go for it. You can hide it somewhere else, but not everybody has those resources. So I think it's important yeah. to remember that it's like, it has to work for each individual person. And that's hard to communicate through YouTube, right? Let's just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you like it, Oh, as a, that's true for everything. For I, it, I say know, all the time on my channel, like, barn doors. don't listen to me. I'm just a guy on the internet. Like, I don't know. People listen to me and that's cool. But like, I'm very grateful for that. But like, if it doesn't, if my advice isn't working for you, then I mean, I'm not going to tell you. you yeah. then, then, then you do you, obviously. So, so, so uh, it might happen someday, Jackie. We're going to. We're going to hope yeah. that you get Butler's, a Butler's, Butler's pantry. pantry is everyone's dream. Yeah, totally. But it's not always, of course, going to be practical for or possible yeah. for most people. I think that's my camera. Hold on. There we go. That's going to happen a bunch oh. of times. So that was kind of one of the things everybody definitely wanted to know your, your opinion on. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, so that's that's good. Let's talk about um, the other really hot topic in kitchen design. That's the open shelf. And, and just talk to us about your overall approach to that when you know, designing a kitchen or thinking that through in a, in a kitchen. The open situation. shelving. Yeah. Open shelving, yeah. Uh, oof, I have, 
I have, um, yeah, definitely there's been a couple of times that I have talked about open shelving. Here's my thing. I think open shelving is meant for things that ought to be displayed, right? So it's beautiful when it is, it, this is just my opinion, but I think like, generally speaking, if you have really beautiful things that you want to display, then some open shelving on the side of an island or on the edge of, you know, the peninsula, or you've got it, um, you know, a little area that you've put next to you above the sink or something. Um, you know, if you've got like a little area that you've put in a small amount of open shelving and you want to use it to display beautiful things, um, great, that's awesome. Then you can go in and then I think that's great. I think the trend that I've discussed on my channel that I have an issue with is these new builds and renovations that are going in that look beautiful, but they're obviously incredibly styled and they are huge amounts of open shelving. And I think a lot mm -hmm. of people are becoming disappointed in them because reality sets in and you realize actually cupboard space was really important and you really wanted to hide, which is what doors do really well, is hide <laughs> things that we need that you don't necessarily want to display, right? Like, you know, a rice cooker, we need one maybe, sure, sure. But like, does it need to be displayed? No, I don't think it's an appliance that's particularly attractive. And that is what open shelving is for. So I think finding an area where you can display some of your stuff that you think is really attractive and that you want to show off and has, you know, adds to your personality and your design style. Some books, you've got some beautiful cookbooks you want to show off. Fantastic. Style them on an open shelf. Great. You've got some ceramics, some stoneware you've picked up or made yourself. Beautiful. Fantastic. Style it. But I mean, these walls of open shelving or these things that are just like, you've now taken away all of your uppers because they're just gone and they're just like now all open shelving. I'm sorry, but I doubt that you have that many nice things <laughs> because I don't, right? Like I have a lot of stuff that is hidden and that's where I want it to be because it's not meant to be styled. So my, and then the other thing of course um, is how dusty that they get, right? Which yeah. is they're just sort of dust collectors that a lot of people, um, but again, you know, that varies depending on the person. Some people, you know, they clean constantly or all the time and they just go in there and clean them. Or maybe it's mugs that you think are beautiful that you want to show off, but you use, you genuinely use them daily for your morning coffee or something. That's cool. And it's like, if you don't mind that and you don't mind giving your shelves a wipe down frequently or washing the stuff frequently, then go for it. But like, I don't think a lot of people do. I don't think this wall of stuff just is 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 used all that often. It's either too beautiful to use daily or it's too ugly and right. shouldn't be played. You know, that's kind of my thing. So like, so my George Foreman grill should not go on my open shelf. You know, that can, you know, that's great. But like, <laughs> throw it away. What's right? Not throw it away. Throw it, throw it in a cupboard. You know, you yeah, or probably it. away. Well, I don't, that's up to you. <laughs> It was thrown away long ago. Yeah. And then also the the thing to keep in mind too with the open shelves is like, especially the ones that are near cook, like the cooktops or near ranges or whatever is they can have, you know, splatter. It's a splatter zone. And some people right. realize that that looks really beautiful in photos when they're staged and you got the photographer come in and all that. And then, and that's sometimes a problem with interior design is that people see incredibly beautiful styled photographs yeah. and uh of, of gorgeous spaces and i show them off on my channel all the time right like I, yeah. I do that i show them all because people love to see them and they get design inspiration and there's nothing wrong with that but you've really got to think through is this going to yeah. work for me yeah. and sometimes like with a wall of open shelving the answer is no sound advice tonight from nick lewis phil saying the george foreman grill we uh, well you need to show off your antiques with open shelves yes that's true you need to show off those piece. 90s it might 90s be worth pieces. something someday. Yeah. I didn't put my old NES on there. Or Wasn't that the, what was the tag? Like it cuts the fat. What was the tagline for that one? Because the fat drifts off, drips off the side because of the slope. Is that what it is? Mm, I, I think that's, I think that's the whole. Like a knockout or something. Isn't that the whole, yeah. isn't that the whole like idea behind the George Foreman grill? I don't know. Yeah. How it's like on a slant. Make off that? Oh my God. I need to come up with a grill or something. Then I could just Oh yeah, retire. for sure. He, yeah. It, it definitely helped. grill. Everyone's weighing in about the open shelf and they're all basically saying um, a lot about uh, dust. Um, yeah. Knocks and, out the fat. There you go. It writes itself. You know, yeah. Grease, stuff like that. So it's really, it really uh, the thing people are saying. I'm really curious if Nick thinks glass fronted cabinets with minimal framing on the doors will replace open shelves one day to show off dishware. Oh, interesting. As much dust, just a section of your kitchen. Um, 
Yeah, you, you're, it's right. You, you, well, that's a trend that will that might that will probably come back. It's a trend that we've definitely seen before, mm -hmm. um, and I it. it it felt dated after a while. And so, yeah, probably cyclically, these things always come around. They always come back around and they come back slightly different. You know, right, like yeah. they're, they're, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not always the same. Um, what is it? What is it? History doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. It's always like, it never comes back exactly the same as it did before, but someone's going to do something interesting, probably with some like, yeah, fluid. I'm seeing a lot more like um, cabinetry with fluted glass because fluted glass is very popular right now. Yeah. Um, and so I'm seeing a lot of uh, I'm seeing a lot of fluted glass being used in cabinetry. So that that is maybe an example of an area. And I am seeing it in kitchens. So I would say and that, that's interesting, too, because it's also a little bit opaque. So it doesn't quite show everything as clearly. But for sure, that'll probably come back around. Yeah, I think so. Glass cabinets are pretty popular, even still. It solves the dust problem. I'm not sure it completely solves yeah. the, um, you know, you have ugly things problem. But, you know. <laughs> Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Sure. Well. Uh, <laughs> Karen is saying, Nick, I've been enjoying your design videos this week. Thanks, Mark, for introducing him to me. Imagine uh, you both giving me great ideas for my new kitchen. Awesome. Karen, thanks for coming on. That's what we're all about, is new ideas. They don't always have to work for you, but, you know, we yeah. like the new ideas. And thanks for handing it, pointing them over to me. <laughs> You're my go-to uh, interior designer. I'm your go-to. Wow. Oh yeah. 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 But do you watch a lot of um, interior design channels or mostly just, uh, I, I peruse them. Peruse. Okay. You know, yeah. yeah. I do too. Honestly. So, yeah. I find that it, um, it starts to stifle my creativity when I want, when I watch a lot of interior design channels. So a lot of people are just like, you know, did you see so-and-so's new YouTube video? And I was like, no, because I find that then when we do right. that, when we all watch, I've talked about this with other interior design channels, so I'm not alone, but when we watch each other, it tends to stifle our um, yeah. creativity a little bit. And we end up all saying the same stuff. And that the audience doesn't want us just to sit there and say the same stuff because we already yeah. sometimes have the same tips. So, um, you know, it's hard to find something fresh and new and you're not going to do it by watching everybody else. No, that's right. Yeah. Um, no, but but I, we're, I we're slightly different, right? We're, we're like, you're in the interior time, yeah, design right. space, but we do different stuff. You're an expert yeah. in a totally different area than me, for sure. I'm an expert, yeah. Well, I don't <laughs> I think claim, I'm an expert. So I if you're one, that's one. great. <laughs> I claim to be one. Um, but I find like um, watching interior design channels, I'll either be inspired or I'll be like, um, not depressed, but just like, ah, like I'll, I, I, I can't watch them because like, I won't be, I can't do what they do. Mm. So it's like, it's, it's a, it's a conundrum for me, but well, normally not, I get inspired because yeah. You know. Yeah. They're not uh, magicians. It's a skill that, that is, that I'm still learning, honestly. Like I think yeah. everybody is always learning and yeah, that's the thing. Um, but my peers and on YouTube, I find sometimes um, oh, I've watched a lot of Nick YouTube videos. Oh, thanks. That's a lot of, how many is a lot? That's a lot of me. Sometimes I'm like, that's my, I, I have to see my own stuff because when I edit it and I'm like, God, this guy goes on. <laughs> do you, uh, do you find when you're filming a video, sorry, everyone, this is just a little off topic. This is a little YouTube yeah, chat. Um, when you're, cause I mean, I edit all my own videos and it's like, Mark, can't you just get one sentence out without having to like start over again? like the amount of edits I do, I'll film like 45 minutes for a five minute, you know, video, of yeah. just like saying the same thing, saying the same thing, saying the How same many thing. minutes to get to five? Oh, like 45 to an hour. Oh, wow. Of, yeah. Of no, filming. that's, I didn't mean, oh, wow. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> no, it's true. Honestly, the fact, <laughs> sorry, that sounded way too judgmental. No, that is uh, normal to spend a lot of time. People would be shocked. Well, they look at my clock, right? And they're always trying to judge how much time is Nick taking to film uh, mm -hmm. the, the infamous great clock. But <laughs> truthfully, it takes a lot of editing to make me sound coherent. So I wouldn't really, um, I wouldn't really worry too much about that. It does, it, it, it is a lot of, you know, fumbling over your words. It's, it's when there's a camera in front yeah. of you, like everything changes, but, but slow, but I, I will say editing your own stuff has made me, you get, makes you better because you see yourself and you get comfortable with seeing yourself on camera um, by doing your own stuff and editing your own stuff and seeing your own content. Literally like, you know, think about this. If you've watched me for like a 15 minute video, especially in my first like year where I was editing everything myself, you see yeah. me for 15 minutes. I've seen myself in that video for like eight hours because yeah. like, that's how much footage over and over if you count all the times going back. So for me, 
you get pretty comfortable pretty quickly seeing yourself on camera. So I think you, you get, you, it makes you a better YouTuber. So. I agree. I'm, yeah. I'm getting better at it. I script a little bit better now, so I don't have to uh, fumble I so don't, much. I don't script. I like, yeah. do you completely I, script or not? Sorry guys. This no, is way too my, YouTuber, see, my but... problem is I am, like I mentioned, I'm very by the seat of my pants. I see, uh, I see my buddy Jed here. He knows all about it. He's a friend of mine, very by the seat of my pants. So scripting for me is very difficult. Um, yeah. But I do find that when I script a little bit, I can get through a segment uh, a little easier. So yeah, I'm if learning. you see if you see me ever on like TikTok, Instagram, or even I was doing I was doing like some YouTube shorts, any like short form content stuff, I've scripted that, and I'm like, yeah, I'm on it because you only have yeah. like thirty seconds, yeah. or everyone moves yeah. away. No one has an attention span, right? So, but when if I'm doing a YouTube video and it's twenty minutes, like that's literally me in front of a camera being like, okay, I've got some bullets, but I'm like. That's why some yeah. of the stuff that falls out of my mouth is like, what was that? Um, <laughs> but like, I don't know. I just start talking like this. I just like, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I find this platform, this, this way to, to do a video is a little easier because no one's expecting it to be curated and perfect. Like mm. it is a chat, you know, and, and that's, and that's fine. So I like that. Yeah. Uh, here's a good question. Do you think black cabinets, black faucets, uh, et cetera, will be classic 10 years from now? Oh, I have, that is a very good question, Mark, because I have struggled with this. And actually I do a series on my channel where I do like trendy or timeless. And I try to talk about like, do I think it's trendy or do I think it's timeless? And I have avoided this one because I'm really struggling. I don't, what, I'm really curious to hear what you think, Mark. I think that cabinets will, I mean, look, black is a neutral like white. And I have said on the record that white is a, like a white kitchen is timeless. Do I think it's the most adventurous, creative choice? No. Do I think that it's, it's a fine choice. It's a classic choice. It's a good choice. You're not going to win an award with your, you know, white kitchen with shaker cabinets. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. That's fine. You're not going to win an award, but it's beautiful. And people, it, you know, you'll resell that place and no one's going to offend any buyers. Like you're like, you're good. Black. Unbelievable. Oof, I think Sorry. Well, it's true, but it's a classic timeless choice. And that is a sensible choice, Mark. Um, it's all good. Black, black, I do not have as much faith in as a cabinet, like as, as, a, as a, as a, for kitchen cabinets, you know, black is a neutral. And I always say, I do think neutral tends to age better sometimes than colors, which tends to, especially like really saturated colors, like often work in like jewel tones and whatever, they tend to work mm -hmm. more in cycles. But I think black is just so heavy. And mm -hmm. there's just so much in the kitchen cabinetry that um, I, I'm not hopeful that it's going to be a timeless choice in five to 10 years. I think it's a great, it's a fun choice. I'm loving like, yeah. these black kitchens, I think look so sexy, so cool, so glamorous. But yeah. do I think that they're going to be as sexy, cool and glamorous in seven years when you go to sell the house? Uh, I'm not hundred percent because the next buyer might not like them. Faucets no, because, and- Oh, go, yeah, hurry, let's talk about break it up the next two. buyer, the next buyer will, will probably like white shaker cabinets. <laughs> exactly, because you're never going to go wrong. You're never going to go wrong with the white shaker. They might not love white shaker, but they're going to put it in because it's fine. You're not going to like turn anybody away. Now, faucets and drawer pulls. Now, that is an interesting question. I think that has more of a leg to stand on as a alternative to, you know, brass or stainless or chrome or, or brush nickel. Um, you know, will it? I, I, I have more faith that that's going to look better in the long term. I don't know, right. you know, if it's going to be as timeless as, say, like, you know, chrome, for example. You know, right. brush, brush nickel is, is kind of a little bit out right now. It's looking a little yeah. bit more dated, but I think like chrome is still a fine option. Uh, brass, especially like an aged, like a, like a real brass, not anything too um, shiny and glammy, I think is a fine right. choice, like a brushed brass or brushed gold. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that um, black has a better shot. Black, uh, I don't know yeah. if you agree, but as door poles and faucets, I, it has a better shot than the cabinetry. When it comes to cabinetry, like personally, I love when I look at a, a kitchen, if it's like a, a very matte black slab door, um, I like it if it's even if it's like an oak or, or some kind of wood grain mm. uh, coming through and paired with like paired with white or paired with not white, sorry, paired with like a natural wood color. That to me looks really, really nice. But again, like is it going to be the thing that that carries on? I think if you are planning on selling a house, then you want to 
think about that in a in different way. If, you, if it's your forever home, you're going to be there for the next 10 years mm. and you like it. Well, you know, go for it. But I, yeah, I don't think it'll be the, the hot trend. No, I think it looks cool. And I'm loving like, you know, I find like design, I really love like Australian design because it sort of fits my design style really well. Like I'm loving mm -hmm. all these contemporary designs coming from Australia because I just think, I don't know, there's something about Australian design that just feels not as traditional and sort of like, it's like Canadian, we're, we're both Canadian. And I find like we are different than Americans in terms of some of our preferences for sure. But American design and even European design is sort of locked into a certain um, sort of, I don't know, it just is, is, is sort of borrows so much from its past. And I feel like Australian right. design, I don't know if it's just because they're like geographically very far away or whatever, but they feel very like contemporary and they're not afraid to do something completely new. And so I would say that black cabinets and, you know, you're seeing a lot of that in from coming from these Australian designers where it's just like the popular sort of hot thing right. to do and has been for a couple of years and they look beautiful, yeah, but it's really a very, do. it's a very specific choice that works for a very specific person in terms of, um, and because it doesn't work for everybody or even close to everybody, these trends oftentimes sort of work in cycles where the people that really want them that are really doing something trendy and cool and interesting kind of jump at it. And then it sort of fades away as everybody that wanted to do it, did it. And now that's how we're on to something else. Right. Like green. That's like green, like green cabinets, right? Okay. Which is. If, uh, if we, if I don't get to your questions or if I don't put it up, um, my apologies. So we have a lot of chats coming through, a lot of questions mm -hmm. coming through. So if, if by some chance, which is likely I miss you, my apologies, try again or, or whatnot. But uh, Trish has a question um, about lighting in the kitchen is a mystery to me. It seems like if we were to do enough recess lighting to cover the space, it would look like a landing strip for planes. So what's uh, what's a good what's a good rule of thumb, I guess, for for kitchen lighting? I mean, other than you know, I guess your window and pot lights, lights in the ceiling, yeah, pot or lights, pot lights and underneath cabinets. Recess what, what are your thoughts about um, what are your thoughts about toe kick lighting and the ambient lighting above cabinets and stuff like that? Do you think that's worth investigating in, in a kitchen? I can tell by the expression on your face, you're not as big of a fan, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's true, Mark, but I actually really like it. I love recess lighting uh, in general. I Under a just, toe kick, though? Um, yeah, I kind of like it. Okay. Do you not like no, it? That's, that's... I kind of like it. I do. I, I don't know. I just think it um, is just another opportunity to sort of brighten a kitchen. I, especially in sort of a smaller kitchen as well. Um, I like it. I think it's sort of... Yeah, it just sort of, um, it's just another opportunity to add a little bit of interest. I'm not against it. Um, You're not against it. Okay, well, no, I'm not we're allowed to disagree. The, we're allowed to disagree. The, <laughs> the, the ambient lighting above, to me, I I'm not really a big fan of. But have you seen the the countertop that's like incandescent and they have LEDs in the countertop? Um, like under can, Onyx? It's, it, it's, it's LEDs built into, it's like fiber optics almost built. I think it's fiber optics. It's built into the surface. So this, like the actual surface itself glows. It doesn't sound like something I would like. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I just like things, countertop. sometimes I like things a little subtle. Um, but yeah, exactly. Someone even said toe kick at night. Yeah. So that's also what's kind of nice is practically speaking, when you come in, you can like, Kind of get around your kitchen a little bit more because you can have it you know motion censored and activated when you walk in the kitchen um, in the middle of the night which can be helpful but um the, okay glow in the dark countertops um yeah no <laughs> i don't <laughs> i think that that i think that onyx is a natural stone and sometimes well you, you see it a lot in like bars and clubs and stuff like if you right. go to really some cool bars and stuff like that, they'll get slabs of onyx and they'll put it on the backsplash and they'll light it up. Mm -hmm. um, it's typically used in bars because mm -hmm. bars are trying to make a real statement. And it's like the setting where like something that weird and outrageous can make sense. And they're usually dark, like bars are dark. So it can make sense yeah. to have to backlight some to, to backlit some onyx. In terms of other countertops, like the material, I don't know, like if what you're talking about, it's not quartz, is it? It's not porcelain. It's like... Uh, I'd be really curious the material. It if it's a natural stone, it's probably onyx because if it's, you shine, if you backlight it, you can see yeah, it. It looks cool I in a bar. I don't think it's natural. I think it's um, some kind of um, acrylic, maybe. 
Yeah, if I walked into somebody's house and they were like, hey, check out my kitchen island and it's got like, onyx and it's lit up, I might be a little bit like you probably have more money than you um we should. can't be friends <laughs> yeah i'm just like mm, that's cool but like natural stone is beautiful i just don't know if it needs to light up yeah um what about pendants like hanging pendants over an island what's the what's the rule um i like them i think we can be a little bit more adventurous with our choices of pendants over okay. um i see a lot of lantern pendants still which are very very popular and i find them to be a little bit overplayed the open Do you like the the large ones like do you like to be so sometimes i find this on my channel a lot right like it's there's a there's a there's a lot of the audience that wants me to just like explain some interior design stuff and not real and be a little bit objective or as objective as right. you can be and then there's a large part of my audience is just like no nick we're here for you we want to hear what you have to say about this particular thing so it's very a, a challenge because i'm always like trying to be like if you like this amazing awesome go for it i don't and let's talk about why i don't and so i try right. to do that balance so to answer knowing that now to answer your question do i like the big large like the, the pendants that are like almost like you take a pendant like a lantern and then just like stretch it so that it fits yeah. over top no i don't really love those and for me it's because i think they're very commonly used in just a design style that is um different interior design styles that are just not really my own personal taste yeah. but inherently i mean you know you could make an argument like some people do they don't like open pendants that have like an exposed bulb um i don't hate them as much as your average person but i get why people don't like them um you know what i'm talking about there like i even have one over my dining room table like where you can see the light bulb a lot of people yeah hate I, them. mine's like that yeah. And so, you know, the lantern pendant is going to do that. And so a lot of people have a hate on for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't, I think they're a little bit overplayed. They're a little bit kind of, which isn't necessarily a problem, but I do think like I've seen them a lot and I've seen them all in the exact same kitchen. It's the all white kitchen with the, with the chrome lanterns, yeah. the three chrome lanterns sitting over top of the, of the uh, kitchen Island or the peninsula. I don't know. For me, I just, um, I find them a bit uh, overdone. And again, a style that just, I don't personally like. There's nothing wrong with them necessarily. I, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's not my style. Yeah, it comes down to what, what you like. What do you, what do you think yeah. about, um, cause I talk about Ikea quite a bit. Like when I walk into an Ikea showroom, especially a kitchen showroom, like it's obviously they have their team of designers who, who curate that and figure that out. Mm -hmm. And to me, looks it always looks nice because i mean almost anything is going to look nice to me <laughs> but um what, what's your thoughts on ikea's role in like consumer design if that makes sense mm. you know because so many people are walking through that following those arrows seeing that stuff and so there that has to that probably translates to a lot of people's homes so what, what do you think their role is in that do you think it's like they, they have a strong hand in that or what, yeah, what's Ikea's good. We could, we, we could talk a lot about just Ikea alone. Because um, I've done many videos on Ikea. But um, yeah, I think that they've curated a very, obviously a Scandinavian, <laughs> but let's just generalize it and call it a very modern style. Because not everything mm -hmm. is Scandinavian that's in an Ikea. No. This definitely leans more modern. I mean, there is some traditional or even you know transitional pieces as well. You could get some stuff that feels very farmhouse to me when I'm in there. But they'll, they'll respond to the trends. But it's rooted, of course, in very much a modern sense. I think IKEA, what they do very well it, for a global audience is, you know, it's it's modern, stylish pieces that keep up with the trends. Like, I know we always feel like IKEA doesn't change all that much when we walk through it, but when you really look at the pieces of what's coming out, they do know and they do respond to trends quite well. Um, and I think they offer a stylish enough version for your average consumer to be able to learn about that, you know, the, the, their style, more so okay. than, say, going to, like, a Home Depot, which right. I think is a little bit more of a builder sort of style yeah. or it's it, it, yeah. much more of that, that focus. So I think Ikea yeah. is just so smart at creating, it's not avant-garde, like, you know what I mean? It's not kooky weird and you're like, oh my God, look at mm -hmm. this, but it's just stylish and designer enough. And they've got just yeah. their you know, finger on the pulse of trends just enough to keep you interested and to make sure that they're still always relevant. Yeah. But they never teeter to the point of being, so weird that people are just not going to go for it, you know? And so I think they just do such a good, uh, I think they just do such a good job of, of 
getting that. Um, it's not, and that's the thing is that for me, I mean, you see it discussed a lot on YouTube. Do you do stuff on Ikea? Cause I, I have, yeah, I, I do, I do Ikea, Ikea stuff. content. I love I think, going to Ikea. I think Ikea stuff. I mean, I don't know about you, but like for me, the Ikea content used to do really, really well last year, especially during the pandemic, because I think people, well, people, everything in interior design and home, whatever went because everybody spent all the time at home and looked around right. and thought, you know, this place is a dump. I need to fix it and came and watched <laughs> people like me. Right. That's, that's the reality. And so they went to places like Ikea, which of course had infamously, they're all like stock shortages and, and supply yeah. chain issues and whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the my Ikea content used to do really, really well. It still does. But I think people are a little sick of it. But the reason designers and, and influencers, which I hate the word, but whatever, YouTubers, whatever, the reason everybody talks about IKEA is because it's a global brand yeah. that is accessible, yeah. that also has exactly. like a price point that is reasonable enough that people will like they can yeah. they can conceivably go there. If I did a video on restoration hardware, for example, it would get like 20,000 views. People would watch it, but they'd be like, well, I'm not going to afford this lamp. So why am I even watching this guy? Right. right? Like, but Ikea is also global. Like you can, you can find yeah. it. It's in Europe. It's in Asia. It's in North America, which if you think yeah. about it, you know, we don't have targets really just American only. And you've got a lot of yeah. these retailers are really just, you know, West Elm. I talk West Elm, CB2, Crate and Barrel, but they're very US focused. They don't oftentimes have a huge presence outside. Yeah. Well, in Europe, they have totally different retailers and, um, and, and Ikea is just such a like, it's, it's, so to get back to your kind of question a little bit more is just like, it's quite, it's a, it's a very generic, modern, middle of the road, just stylish enough. You know, someone said it's the Walmart of Sweden. I would argue it's like the Starbucks. Of, I would say it's the Starbucks of design. Do you know, it's like the lattes, you know, it might not be yeah. the best latte that you can find in town, but it's like, but most people like everybody goes there. Like, like everybody, yeah. everybody goes to a Starbucks and airport. Even if like, they don't like, want yeah, to. why not? Right? It's like, <laughs> it's 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 decent enough to clear the bar, and I think that's where I would put IKEA. And okay. there are some yeah, real gems, I, like, I would say. I feel like I'm walking to an IKEA and basically look at whatever it is and be like, I get that, 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 that. I can put this all just into my space, and it's gonna look good. And that's what I think a lot of people need. Yeah. Is, you know. Well, Here, here's the package of what's going to look good and you can buy it all right here from us. So they do a great job of that. What what they do as well is like, you know, now I think in marketing and retail, the buzzwords are like experiential retail. Like you're seeing all these companies, how do we create a retail experience where customers can go try out our product, you know, see it, touch it, feel it, get to know it. Even e-commerce brands are getting more into it. You know, mm -hmm. retailer, gen, most retailers are like, how do we make people use our products, see our products and like use an experience to highlight why, why this retail is worth going to. Ikea has been doing that for decades. Like they are so, a lot of what these brands like, you know, Brooklyn and Casper, uh, Warby Parker, whatever, a lot of what these brands are trying to create now is what Ikea has been doing for decades. And I think people don't realize like how smart it is. Like they literally... They walk you through. My partner actually used to work at IKEA. We lived in the Netherlands, and like he used to work at the um, head office in Harlem. And when I oh. lived there, and, and I worked in Amsterdam, and he just took the trade to Harlem, and it was like oh, cool. I, le I learned from him and whatever. Like so much of IKEA's little ways that they do things, and the whole idea is is that you're just supposed. The whole point of the first floor is to just be inspired. You're just supposed yeah. to walk around and be inspired at the possibilities of what you can do. And the stairway, yeah. they actually call that open the wallet. Like the whole goal is when, <laughs> when you walk down that stairway, you know the one, everybody's got it in Ikea. You go down that yeah. stairway and it's like, open the wallet. Let's give them a candle that's like 89 cents. Yeah. All we're trying to do is get you in line. Like we just want to get yeah. you in the line at the end. And then they just get you throwing stuff in that cart because you're so yeah. inspired at all the possibilities because they've created, they've like got like a designer in a box. That's what upstairs basically is. Right. Yeah. And that's then they go downstairs, like. you open the wallet. Now you're throwing in the candles. Okay. Let's take the tea lights for $2. And then, yeah. and then before you know it, curtains are in the cart and you were all of a sudden buying yeah. a rug and you're like, how did this happen to me? So that's like, yeah, I mean, they're amazing at what they do. I have huge yeah. respect for them as a company. Cool. Okay. Let's go on. To, let's just look at a couple of these. Um, I know people are, Oh, there you go again. People are putting in some stuff here and, uh, Someone said, uh, fellas, what about recess light over island in a smaller space? Sure. Recessed lighting over an island? Like so I yeah, so I guess like uh recess lights, but specifically 
you know, over an island. So instead mm. of a pendant coming down, recessed lighting. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. I also love the like, um, again, I'm lover, I love like contemporary is like the bars, just the plain sleek bars that are just yeah. like this um, lighting over top. So instead of doing like two or three pendants over top of your island, but just doing a straight bar, very simple. But that's, that's what I love. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I guess whatever works. I think the only, the upside of the recess lighting for me is that it is dimmable, like the LEDs, mm. um, which I find is, is good. But in a small space, couldn't you, couldn't you put an, a pendant in a small space as well over an island? Like, would that be just as good? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean you could, I would think. Space. Again, it really, it really depends on every sort of um, place. I mean, you guys can see in the, in the back of my, in my videos, if you've seen them, I don't have any pendants or any lighting over top because it's, it's not even an Island. It's a peninsula and we don't, right. it just, it's too small. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, but yeah. we have pot lights above and there's plenty of lighting in there and we have recess lighting and we even have the toe kick lighting. So for us, it's like, yeah. there's Maybe enough lighting mean, there. I think, I think probably by recess, they mean pot lights. That makes more sense because I was wondering what the recessed because we have it re yeah. recessed into I like it recessed into the cabinetry so you have right. like under your uppers and then it just you know we have it on two sets so you can turn on the um, you can turn on the pot lights if you want like if you're actually cooking and then if you don't want you know that much light and you just want something a little bit more subdued and subtle you can just do the under counter or under cabinet lighting as well as the under the, the toe kick lighting and it's sometimes enough and you don't really want a whole ton more lighting than that but okay. yeah. Let me go on to the next one here. This one we didn't chat about earlier, but everybody knows what I think about these mm. and what I will comment about. But in and this is more functional kitchen design aspect, but what's your take on just corner cabinets in general, base corner cabinets in a kitchen? What what do you what do you like? What do you don't like? What's your I don't I don't like anything. Your, they're, they're not none of it. It all sucks. <laughs> Sorry, like can we, it's not a big can we high five somehow? They're all, they're all the not good. Um, okay, wow. You know, we all haven't made a great. No, there's no great solutions. The corner is not good, but like it's either incredibly difficult to get in. There's either these pull out sort of systems, which are a decent, I guess, alternative, so that you can pull out the drawers and put the stuff in, and then throw and put it back in there. Um, you know, there's some like decent options but there's no great options you can what we what actually is in this kitchen which is a little bit strange but again i actually didn't do it because this part was renovated before i arrived but um the, the previous owner which i think he hated corner cabinets so much that he just went straight right to the back and then underneath the drawer is where you know the main drawer where like you've got the corner cabinets is just like three little cute bar carts so the bar carts basically are extra storage that you can just sort of pull out as needed. And if you need to access the cupboards, you can pull them out. Great solution. Not really, but it does the job. And, you know, it's it's somewhat better than some of the other alternatives. But that was an interesting choice that he made that he was like, hmm. you know, he hated them that much that he was like, no, nope, I'm just not doing it. It's just like opted well, out. <laughs> I can't tell you how pleased I am with your answer. <laughs> well, what do you what do you what 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 do you I'm sure oh, you just hate them, period. I don't yeah. like corner cabinets and I mean, everyone knows already on my channel, but here's, so instead of doing corner cabinets and I get challenged on this a lot, um, is that I block the corner off completely. I just use a 90 degree filler and mm. you know, three inches or whatever works on, on both sides. So as long as you get clearance past handles and, and then you can kind of maximize that, that space on either side mm. to, to be more functional. So, it, you know, unless, it's a very, very tight corner. Um, maybe then I'll consider some type of corner unit. But if if you have space, I, I would I rarely ever will will say to put a corner cabinet in, especially like like a lazy Susan corner cabinet that that just deep and and stuff falls off the back. So nothing new to my viewers, but that's how I like to do it. Just block it off completely, and then people mm -hmm. will challenge me and say, "Well, you're wasting all that space," but I think in terms of functionality, using the space that's more easily accessible and making that more functional to me makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's how I like to do it. I've done mm -hmm. it in my own kitchen. So I'm speaking of experience on that one because I've done it in my last two, my last two homes. 
I've never once wished that I had a corner to crawl into, you know, and, and lose things in. So, yeah, it's maybe a place to put the KitchenAid or something. I think that's what's, what's going on back there. Yeah. But like, honestly, they're just like a, <clears throat> if you can avoid it at all costs, but yeah. Yeah. I even have a, I did a video where I I'm highlighting this unit that you can buy. It's called the, the, the quant, Quatra, Quantra or Quatra. Quanto, I don't know, something like that. Anyway, it's this very expensive thousands and thousands of dollars, but it sits in that corner um, and it, it it's a lift. So the whole thing mm. lifts up. Very interesting. I don't know how practical it is. It's certainly not practical from a point of, you know, if your budget, you know, if you're not, it's not friendly to the budget, if you're on a budget, uh, but it was interesting. But, but all in all, I think it's still just something that could probably break down and, ultimately just fail. So yeah, I always like to just uh, to close them off. So that's cool. I'm kind of, you made my day right there. There you go. Don't love them. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Jackie, who's talking about, I think they're talking about black stainless. Uh, I heard that it's almost impossible to cover up black stainless scratches. What, what's your favorite? Um, I don't know. I know painted finishes can sometimes yeah. wear off and chip and not look great after a while. When it comes to appliances, what what's your go to in terms of the the finish? What do you like personally? Um, usually black. I think now is a lot more mm -hmm. popular. Uh, a lot of people really hate stainless. I don't hate stainless. Um, but you know, we, someone mentioned mixing metals. I saw in the comments go by. Um, that counts, right? So your stainless range or whatever is going to count there in terms of how you want to play with that. So. You know, black, I think, is a is a very contemporary choice. I'm seeing a lot of black appliances, especially built-ins like uh, Fisher and & Paykel. And, you know, the, a lot of their contemporary right. line is going to be black. And that would be my first preference. But again, that's my own style. Um, white, I think, is starting. Well, not starting to. White looks quite mm. dated. I don't want to offend anybody. But I think mm -hmm. white appliances definitely. Um, Aren't they coming back, though, a little bit? Yeah, well, like everything does, right? Like mm -hmm. maybe, I don't know, but a lot of people are loving really colorful appliances, right? A lot of people love this Meg, like, you know, bright yellow or bright, you know, orange appliances and like stuff. So a lot of people are getting, like yeah, but again, like, do I think that's a timeless look? Like, you know, well, I mean, Meg's been around for a long time, but it's a definite choice. Like it's a specific yeah. decision to make. White, I think a lot of white appliances still look quite dated. Are they starting to come back? Maybe. I still see overwhelmingly stateless. Like I yeah. think that stainless steel is still overwhelmingly the overwhelmingly the the, the first choice for people. I think that um, black is definitely becoming more popular in contemporary kitchens for sure. Do you ours see the are, same? Or ours are a black stainless, mm -hmm. um, and I don't have any issues with them smudging or anything like that. Um, they don't. They haven't scratched. Well, we haven't scratched them. So yeah, no, so far so good. But I do see a little bit more of people looking back towards white appliances, hmm. which, um, you know, a little bit, which I don't actually hate. Um, but, but stainless steel, like stainless and like the brushed seem to be the, the most popular thing, which leads me to this question is, and, and I think you mentioned this earlier when we were chatting yes. about, about paneled appliances. Like I know in, in, in Europe, it's, you know, very, very popular, it's popular here too, but it's, it doesn't seem to be as popular in North America to have panel appliances. So is that, what do you, what do you think? Is that, I mean, Ikea does a great job of promoting that, especially with their dishwashers. Um, yeah. But I did a, a, a video recently where I'm looking at celebrity kitchens and a lot of them had, you know, a, a paneled fridge of some sort. Not that you need to be a celebrity to do that, but obviously it does cost more money to have your fridge paneled and to have a fridge that accepts a, a panel. Um, do you like paneled fridges, paneled appliances? Yes. It's a short answer. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, it's, I think you should consider it. I don't think it's necessarily for everybody. I do. I do agree with you that it is very much more popular in Europe. And again, I spoke about Australia earlier and I think it's very much, it's, it's popular there too. Right. Um, it's very much a North American thing to have things that aren't to, to have them sort of freestanding. I will, for me, for now, prefer them for sure. I just think it's yeah. it's more seamless. It's integrated. It just looks a little bit like, you know, your cabinets are probably going to be better looking. 
Um, and it just really blends your cabinetry in everything. Otherwise, I just feel like there's so many appliances in the kitchen, right? Like you've got, right. so you've got double ovens, which you can't panel, and then you've got your stove, and then you've got your dishwasher, and then you've got your microwave, yeah. which we've talked about. Um, you've got just all these different things that are already happening in the kitchen. And I think if nothing, if it's just not paneled, um, people look at the, the kitchens at the end of the day, just look too PC and just too off. You know what I mean? Like, it just looks like it's a bunch of different pieces together. And I just think right. I would rather, obviously some pieces you're not going to be able to panel, oven, my grave. Um, and now those are fine. Those are necessary evils. That's okay. But I do think that um, if you can panel it, you should for sure consider it. Because I do think if you're going to be, especially renovating or a new build, you know, you're, you're going to be looking at spending a whole bunch of money on that kitchen. I know that it's, it is a lot more expensive, but I would... If you have the budget for it, I think it, you know, it, it would be good to, to do it. Again, to I say that, but obviously everybody's in a different position, right? Some people are just not able to, and I'm not saying it's a bad choice not to have a freestanding fridge, but I think yeah. if you can, you should um, consider it. Um, hoop yeah. Stat you hoop static saying, why do you, why do they cost more? Why do you think uh, it wouldn't be cheaper to have to make finish outer door? I mean, and then uh, Sean's, Sean's chiming in. He's saying, hey, Sean, um, I don't think that it's that they cost more, just that they only do it on higher end models, which is true. So you're paying more for high, higher end model right. in the first place. Right. Because you're probably paying yeah. for a Fisher and Pike. Or you're pay well, they're actually not that expensive. Well, they are, but they're not as like Mila yeah. or but uh, whatever are going to be much more point, expensive. That is, a, that is a good point. I do think, though, that they are just in general, they are going to be more expensive. There's a couple of things. I think that there's... Um, they're not as easy, probably. Well, are they as easy to mass produce or is there some issues around that? I will say if you look at the hinge on a paneled fridge versus yeah. a regular one, like that is, there's a lot more to it that goes into creating a panel fridge. It seems really simple because you're like, oh, you're saving the, the stainless steel by not paneling the front. But you really are like, I think there's a there's more mechanisms around the, the hinge to be able to be able to, 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 to hold that cabinet that door, that to operate it, that I think, does make it more expensive. Like I have, um, again, it was put in before I moved here, but I have a Mila fridge that is paneled. And I mean, the, the, the hinge on that thing is like this versus a regular fridge is just going to be a lot simpler. Uh, so I think the mechanics of it are more complicated than just doing a, um, than, than, than just, and it, yeah, it is on higher end model. So that is obviously yeah. going to jack up the price. Uh, Sean's saying, I don't understand the idea of hiding fridge either. My fridges look, some fridges look really cool. I, I will say this, and this might not be the interior designer's choice, but like my fridge, I really like our fridge because it has a big screen on it. So I obviously mm. wouldn't want to put a panel over that. What do you think about my choice of having a fridge with a big screen uh, that I can watch YouTube videos on? Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to be our... <laughs> How sensitive are you feeling, Mark? Uh, no, no, I don't listen, love them. <laughs> I already know about my burn door. Oh, I get yeah, it. Okay. Next there'll be another have, one that'll be like, I have ship my, lap. Yes, Nick hates my fridge. And yeah, you know, I don't love the look of fridges in general. So if I can hide it, I will. So I will. Okay. It's great that you love the look of a fridge, and that's great. That's awesome. That's you. I don't love it usually. So I prefer to panel them just to like hide them. Um, in yeah. terms of a TV screen, so there's a function question I have around how useful it really is that. And then okay. there's the second piece, which is um, that I don't love the like technology so front and center. And I think it just breaks up and already, again, if you've paneled or whatever, but even just in a fridge, you're trying already to minimize an appliance in my view, um, or I just think it draws a lot of attention to it. It's like, I talked to, I'll give you an example. I have a friend who like has, he said about an ice machine and he was like, I can never understand why someone would ever put an ice machine or a, like those water things that are inside the fridge. Why would you ever put that inside the fridge? Because then you just have to open right. the door every time to go and get it. And he was like, I don't understand that. And I was like, um, I can understand why, because <laughs> taps on the outside of your fridge is ugly, in my opinion. So I would like to hide that. This is worth the step for me to get water. That's worth it because I don't love okay. so much busyness happening on the fridge. So that is an example of he has very different needs than me. For him, it's not wanting to open a door. For me, it's the aesthetic of <laughs> I don't want to mire my fridge already with more TVs and ice things and water dispensers. That's just me. Okay. I like good. a cleaner look. 
uh, so someone <laughs> asked about, I, I can watch videos on my fridge. Yes, I can. I can do almost anything on my fridge door that you can do on an iPad. It's quite uh, amazing. Um, I don't know why. Yeah. Is it, L is it LG or is it? It's a Samsung. Nick gently roasting his YouTube post. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what's funny, actually? I had, so here's the thing, funny, um, little inside YouTube talk. I actually did a, a, a brand reached out to me called LG. You may have heard of them. I didn't mean to okay, name, well. name drop LG. And they wanted to work with me on a video as like a sponsored thing. And I think it's like, I, it's very interesting and fun to use different like sponsored stuff. That's always good to like, you know, work with a brand. And it's obviously great. Um, they support the channel, blah, blah, blah. But they specifically wanted me to talk about something that had nothing to do with kitchens. And then later in the video, people made, well, they didn't make fun. They just like thought, how Nick was this to like, I kind of roasted the TV in the in the kitchen thing later on in the video that was sponsored by LG, but they still approved it. So like, I don't know. I was like, this video is sponsored by LG. Hey, look at this thing that I don't like from LG. And I just did that that's later funny. in the video. And no one really complained. So, you know, that's a, you know, sometimes you just got to take your chances. That's good. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I To be honest, like, you know, obviously everybody knows that I, I don't have an interior designer bone in my body. So... You got to give me a no, pass in the fridge, but uh, but I, I actually we really enjoy that fridge, so that's good. I think Mark, you know, here's the thing: you, you you say you're not, but you are because, like, I believe that function is the most important, right? So if in your your channel is about creating, well, you can tell me what your channel is about, but to me, I look at yeah. you always put function first, and you're always putting function first in the kitchen. So I don't think that you don't have an interior designer's you know, you do, you, this is a subsection of interior design. It's not, it's not yeah. the sexiest part that people always necessarily go like, you know, we, people want to hear me talk about like, you know, Chrome versus brush nickel, or they want to see me, you know, roast the barn doors or whatever, but truly <laughs> it really comes back to the, so much of interior design is like, well, if you're working at an, an interior design agency with clients, so much of it is managing projects, managing client relationships and expectations, working with suppliers and deliverables and making sure everything goes in on time and managing the contractor. And then there's the other stuff, which is like space planning, drawings, making sure that like in the kitchen specifically, like drawers don't bump into drawers, which is like a common thing where people just don't think through all of the different facets of what goes into a kitchen which is an incredibly right. complex thing so you do talk about interior design now I aesthetically aesthetically you might have different make different decisions and that's that's totally for you yeah well that's, it's more like make, yeah you know you ever go to the, the the fair you know you throw the dart at the balloon board it's like that's my interior design applications just like throw a dart see what happens yeah it's but all, again it's like so good. much of the base of interior design is what you're talking about all the time on your channel so it's it's Box. really just i think you know you might not care as much but oh i have that book i'm learning there you go so, we're all learning. learning yeah and it's Trying just also about my game it's also about priorities too some people really they don't care and that's totally fine. And, you know, you, some people just don't really, they, they don't like interior design or they're not interested in it. Some people are interested, but they just don't know. And, and, mm -hmm. and some people are just looking for new ideas and some people, you know, just, just don't care at all. And just the aesthetics doesn't matter. They're just here, you know. Like I found and, out and about rugs. Too. I found out about rugs recently, it blew my yeah. mind. And I found out about like the, the proper way to hang your curtains or your drapes or whatever. Mm. I was like, wow, like, I didn't know those things. So yeah, I'm, it's, I'm, it's, I'm stepping up my game. Yeah, some of it is just like create, like making sure that it's a functional space that's fit for humans, like the curtain example, right? It's a way to sort of, which I'm assuming, you know, you're, you're, you're watching sort of the same stuff that is on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram where you're seeing these different tips. And a lot of it is just sort of trying to create a sense of verticality in your space. And it's to trick the eye into making it feel spaces are bigger or things that are smaller. And it's, that's kind of the, science of interior design a little bit more um yeah. and then some of it is the art which is just whatever you yeah. sort of want to want to make of it and and some people again care about that a lot and some people like it but just don't know enough about it and some people love it it's just everybody's a little bit different yeah i, I agree Ke kelly i don't know why you had to bring this up um has nick seen your gallery wall i hope i hope not um <laughs> I, I don't he has. um and let's just say i hope not um 
but it was my best attempt. So, you know, I did this video for, it was for Skillshare actually, um, because I was learning, mm -hmm. trying to learn some interior design concepts um, through Skillshare um, uh, from Havenly. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I know and the course. So, yeah. yeah, so it was like, you know, just the basic kind of four basic rules of kitchen design. So my, in that video, what I did is I, I created a gallery wall uh, in my living room. So where before it was these, these two kind of, you know, ugly cabinets that I, that everyone said looked like dartboards. And, um, people are so cruel on the internet, Mark. I don't know how they can do it. <laughs> you'd be surprised. Yeah. And, uh, and then on top, there's just yeah. random stuff. So I was like, whatever, it didn't matter to me. I, we didn't care, but I was like, you know what? I'll take this opportunity to try to, try to create something that's more, you know, stylish. Yeah. So I created a, um, a gallery wall and it's, um, it was a good first attempt. There's some problems with it. I know, but, uh, you know, you got to start somewhere and honestly, like, and, and you know this cause you're, you're on the internet. Mm. When you put yourself out there like that, like you're taking a risk. Every single day we're taking risks no. and assuming so, that we're going to get called out for something stupid. Yes. So people on my channel have been very kind to me mm. um, when it came to my gallery wall to say, Hey, you know, like, way to go champ. Like you, you gave it the old college try. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what's funny too, is that like when your channel grows quite like when it, when it grows, it's funny because when people have small channels, they sort of look and go like, oh, we, you know, whatever. Not that that's you because your channel, I mean, you've got 10, how many subscribers do you have now? I think your channel is uh, just past 18,000. So that's, yeah, I'm yeah. talking about when you have like a hundred subscribers as people go like, you know, oh, you know, they, they sort of not take it easy on you. I think people think when they upload to YouTube for the first time, they're just like, oh, I have like zero subscribers. Everybody's going to like hate me on the internet. No, they won't. Yeah. They'll hate you on the internet, but like it takes yeah. time. Uh, yeah. And then after a while, yeah. you start to grow and then people look. Then it was like, that was what happened to me is I hit 100,000 subscribers. We were talking about this earlier, like so quickly. Like it was, yeah. it all happened in like a month because just one video just took off. And I think people like held me to a much higher standard than they did a month earlier. And I'm like, guys, I didn't learn that much in a month. Like you guys are new here. But like people looked at me and were like, who is this guy? And why does he... You know, I don't like his background and this guy doesn't look like he doesn't look like he's know what he's talking about. And I was like, you, you, you're introduced to so many new people and people, they hold you to a whole like different standard. But the good news is with your audience, I mean, you are, are you on TikTok? Because those people are mean over on the TikTok. They are much meaner um, than YouTube. I, I've, I've done a couple of the TikToks, but not enough to be um, considered a TikToker. My, my social media presence is pretty, pretty slim, but it, it's there's only so much time in the day. Yeah, it's it's harder to like attract a community of people that know and like you and will like go there yeah. with you, which is not surprising why your audience would be kind to your gallery wall because they're your people, right? These are the people We're that show up to here. lives. Yeah, they show yeah. up to your lives. They come here. They support you. They're here. They they get value out of what you tell them, what what you show them, and what you give on YouTube, and they're nice to you in return. And there's a sense of community there. Um, TikTok is just like constant, like a content people are just popping things out all the time. And so, yeah, you know, it's just constant people meeting me for the, the feels like every time a hundred thousand people are going to meet you for the first time, which means half yeah. of them will hate you. It seems like, but, um, so anyway, so you, would you say your gallery wall was, was a success? And I, did, did you like, so you took the Skillshare course and then you decided to test it and see how it worked. I, I did. Um, Rahana, we um this will go into replay so you can watch it just go to my channel and you can see the the videos any of the live streams you can see uh as soon as they're they're finished so yes yeah, so you can do that um yeah so i, I took the course i did the, the gallery wall um and yeah i mean i there there are some problems with it i, I already know but i it's it's actually much better than what was there and yeah. uh, for me it was like yeah i was kind of proud of myself that i took the step to like do something like that Cause it was a little bit, it was definitely out of my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just, just to, to attempt that. And I find that once you do something, then you learn, you learn from that experience. So then yeah. some mean thinking about it now, the next time it's like, oh, okay, I should do this or this or that or whatever. Like I have different ideas. So there, there's a book too, that like, I really like, it's called steal like an artist. I don't know if you ever heard of that book. No. Um, basically what it is, is like, when you start out any new artistic uh, uh, venture, like, you know, designing a space or whatever, or building a YouTube channel, it's been relevant for both, is like, you've, typically what you do is people steal, and I say that in the nicest way, is that people steal ideas, bring them into their own, 
copy them, but that's part yeah. of the process. It's like right. you you copy like how many Philip DeFranco YouTube wannabes or Casey Neistat wannabes have there been over the years, right? Like people yeah. that copy a style, they learn it, they copy it, and then slowly they kind of massage it and make it their own. Like if you yeah, looked at my own. first, if you look at my first video on YouTube. And then you look at, again, I'm not trying to plug Skillshare. I feel like this is sponsored, but um, I did, a, I took a Skillshare course, which was Ali Abdel's how to become a YouTuber basic course yep. or whatever. Yep. Did you, you know the course? So, I know why I didn't do the course, but I, I embarrassingly, I if you log in and you take his course and then you look at my first video, like I used his same transitions. I used his sound effects. I used like, yep. it's, it's a project. I, my first video on YouTube, which had zero views, but embarrassingly now has like 400,000 views, which I did not <laughs> expect eventually. When you go on YouTube for the first time, you do like, not oh. expect that video is gonna go like that, but it took time, but eventually it got yeah. there and it was like, holy. But that video is me copying Ali's video because it was basically a class project for Skillshare. And then as yeah. time went on, now you've seen that, I think if you watch Ali's videos and you watch my videos, I don't think you'll really see parallels because I've slowly, as I learned how to do YouTube and feel more comfortable on camera and whatever, yeah. two years on, my style has been shifted so many times that it doesn't resemble. And now it's something more uniquely my own. Yeah. Interior design is the same way. There's nothing yeah. wrong, I think, with looking at my videos, looking at your interior designer handbook, looking at your videos, seeing going on Pinterest, whatever, seeing stuff that you find really interesting and kind of copying it and just going, you know what, I'm going to buy that couch and I'm going to buy those pillows and I'm going to karate chop them just like those people did. And then slowly <laughs> over time you go, you know, maybe actually like, maybe I'm going to try a different pillow, right? Maybe I'm going to experiment with some of these different style pillows, different designs, different colors, whatever. And you start to create something that's a bit more your own. And that's when you start to flex that muscle and you really start to pick up stuff that is more, we always talk about your personal design style. I think yeah. sometimes people see that and they just think it's really, they see other interior designers on YouTube and maybe people like me talking about that. And I think they think that's really daunting. And they're just like, well, I don't have a personal design style. I have a, I like that and I kind of like that. And that's my style. What does that, what does that make me? What, what is that? Yeah. And I think it takes time to get there and that involves trying, copying, failing and trying again. You mentioned cry chopping a pillow. I, I remember watching Nick Arojo do that on whatever show he was on with Sarah, somebody um, doing some design show. And yeah, I remember just thinking that that was, that's the thing. You got to karate chop those pillows. <laughs> yeah. Kelly just brought up a good uh, example down there. It's like cooking. And that's exactly right. You follow a recipe. You don't know how to cook. Go on YouTube, follow a recipe. And then slowly you're just like, Hey, I know how to make this. You know, I can make a pretty amazing pasta sauce without necessarily following a recipe closely. I get it. You know, oil, put in some onions, throw in some garlic, some spices. I can get there. But it takes a bit of time, right? You, can't, yeah. you don't start there. You don't just start no. going in your kitchen, pulling out the oregano and hoping for the best, right? You got to start with that recipe and learning over time. And then you would build your own stuff. So, That's so I'm the getting there. Step. Like it was a good first step. So, you know, you got to start somewhere. And I find by the commitment to putting it on YouTube, it, it makes me more, you know, I'm accountable now. Well, you're, yeah, I think you should be very proud that you're putting yourself out there and being vulnerable about like, hey, I'm not talking about this subject that I'm not actually really an expert in, which is kind of makes me a little bit different because other people, you know, talk about being an expert. There's a lot of experts on, on, on YouTube. So like it, you know, being bold and saying, I don't really know what I'm talking about on this subject, but I'm going to learn. It's kind of cool. I'm going to try. I'm going to try yeah. at least. Karen, Karen said uh, my gallery wall has two sets of trios. So, you know, in the, in the video, I talk about the, the rule of thirds and odd numbers when it comes to um, interior design and like the way yeah. that you position or whatever, put things. Um, and so uh, apparently my gallery wall has two sets of trios. So, you know, I, I knocked it out of the park. <laughs> knocked it out. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah. let's see. Oh, yeah. And then someone said here, another another comment. Deb, we love that you two are real people. Yeah. Well. We try. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I think it's like, I don't know. What do you, you said earlier that you found me, um, what is it? You said, appro I can't remember if you said approachable. Still, I don't want to put yeah, compliments into your mouth. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. said I was the most fabulous, amazing, yeah. wonderful person you've ever met, Mark. And I'm like, that yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's that good. That um no that that and i think you are too right and i think it's because we're yeah. trying to be a little bit um what i will say too is that i think interior designers this is my own personal experience is like if you take on clients if you 
if you have an agency, if you have an interior design business. So again, like I don't take clients. People ask me all the time, which is amazing and flattering. Nick, can you be my interior designer and design a place? Flattered. But I'm more of like a media person, not really mm -hmm. a like, that's not my business. And, but I think if you are that, so like we all know, like maybe you don't, but Lisa Holt, Julie Koo, right? They're um, interior design, like they have their own agencies. And so a lot of people help them with their YouTube channels, but they have their own agencies that they're also running and doing this stuff, which is amazing, but it's a very different business. And I think sometimes, and I'm not saying those two particularly, because I talked to both of them and they're great people and they're friends, but like, I think interior designers that I meet at events and stuff, I don't fit in at an interior design event. Like I go to these things and I'm like, Hey, I'm here from YouTube. And they're just like, mm, no, um, they're talking about these restaurants or projects that they've designed or whatever. And I'm just like, I know how to make a thumbnail. Like I just, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but I go to some of these things and it's just like, Good thumbnail. yeah, thank you. But they're, they're very much like they're, they're trying to, the, the, their customer is not your average YouTube viewer, right? It's not right. a person who, it's not a, you know, um, you know, I don't know, a, a 40 year old man or woman who has two kids and, and lives in the suburbs. That's not their car target person. Their target person yeah. is probably wealthy enough to hire an interior designer or a restaurant group or a famous or a chef or a yeah. person who's open able to afford the 20 to $30,000 that it's going to cost for an interior designer to be high to, 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 for you to be able to hire an interior designer. So their customer is very different than mine. My customer is more of an, of, of a, per, I don't want to say real person because we're all real people, but like <laughs> a person that's, you know, works in a, a regular job and is, just wants a beautiful place and yep. can't afford an interior designer. And that's why they come to people like me. Yeah. And that's great. And that's wonderful. And I hope I can provide some tips and guidance and I hope I can do that. And you do that too in kitchens. And yeah. the thing with these interior designers though, is that they're not, because their customer is different, they have to present this, this idea that they're super important. So they have to, yeah. they have to wear the fanciest clothes you can think of. They have to wear designer. They have to pump their own tires a little bit and talk about how, they've designed this place and this resident and they worked with this person and whatever. And so that doesn't feel approachable because it's not, it's not meant to be approachable. It's meant right. to be for a specific customer that can probably afford their services. doesn't make them bad people. I know them all. Well, I love, I have interior designer friends that have agencies and they have this type of work and this is what they do, but their world is different than my world. Different. Yeah. My customer is um, the viewer and that's what I think. And yours yeah. is, is too in this sense. Right. Yeah. And, and we're not trying to, um, appeal to this customer that's going to buy our services, which is oftentimes this other customer that they're trying to, to deal with. So when right. you meet interior designers, I think it's just very, um, they live in a different world than, than we do. And that's why we subscribe to you. Oh, well, See, thank you. you. Go. We got a second on that. So we, it's set in stone. No, I think that's, that's really important. And you can kind of like, when you, like what I find, like, because I, I have a design service and 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 some of people who come on um, uh, have have used that design service. Mm -hmm. And what what I find has happened is that people already like they already feel like they know me, you know, because because of even if they're not on a live stream, even if yeah. we don't have any communication, but because they see you, they they trust you, they they get a sense that you're you know, you're being real or whatever, like you're, you're not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. Um, and, and so then they, they're, when it comes time to be like, to, to come to you be like, Hey, can you, can you design my kitchen? Like for me, for instance, they already have a sense of who I am. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, and that's all just because of, you know, on YouTube, but if I was trying to be something, you know, yeah. unapproachable and like, whatever, like that, I think that would be, uh, a it pretty hard transition if you also had like an online business uh, as I do on the side of, of YouTube because yeah. YouTube's the only thing that drives my online clientele. I don't, I don't advertise or do anything like that. It's only through like just organic reach, which is good be for that reason, because people already feel like they know you and, and that's really like, that's a good starting point. They like know and trust you, which is, yeah. And I think YouTube, especially like, I know, you know, obviously there's TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff. But for me, I always look at it as, um, 
you know, some people earlier, which is very sweet, have said they've watched several of my videos, right? Which if my average video is 20 minutes long and you've watched half of it, which is fine, you can switch me off, that's cool. <laughs> that's 10 minutes, right? But if you've watched several of my videos, you've like <clears throat> spent time with me. Like you know me to us. Right. And I'm like, you know, I've met YouTubers on, that are like offline in real life. And like, sometimes they're not the same as they are on as yeah. off. Like they have their YouTuber, like, I'm on because there's a camera on me and that's totally, I get it. Like they're, they're performing yeah. in a way and that makes sense. I don't know. The only way I know how to do it is like what you're seeing here live is the Nick you get in real life. <laughs> this yeah. is who I am. And so I think like people do, they do know me to a certain degree. Right. I mean, right. it is kind of, I don't know them, but necessarily, but um, they do kind of know you. And so when you say I, that's why like when I endorse a product or I recommend something or I work with a sponsor, like I, you, or whatever you want to make sure that you're not you're trading in on that trust mm -hmm. and that they because they are yeah. spending a lot of time with you which is yeah. which is um you know quite significant so when you say like if i'm sitting there like well i need to redesign my kitchen and i want to like get a whole kitchen designer and i wanted a kitchen designer i'd be like well obviously i'm gonna go to mark because like why would i go to some dude who i don't know i like right. no and trust mark so that means yeah. something way more um right. than a person who's just you know, maybe a referral or someone who I just right, found yeah. on Google, right? That's that's yeah, not the same. Or not, that is kind of a bit of a um, a game changer is just the amount of time that people spend with us. Well, like people on Instagram, I'm not, I'm on all those platforms as well, but like I'm flicking through people's Instagram stories and I might be spending like 15 to 30 seconds with them. No, I'm not sitting down for 10 minutes and right. watching a video. Watching a video, yeah. And that's really um, something special. Yeah, that, I that, think, that, to YouTube. me, that's, that's the benefit of yeah. YouTube is just that that real community building. Yeah. You know, and they, they know you because they like, do. Yeah, and this this live stream, like when I decided to do this live stream, which was very nerve wracking because you're just you're just live. You know, it's like well, anything could happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, but it's one of my favorite, most favorite parts of the experience because you can you connect more with people like you know Darlene and Jackie and Karen and Carol and like Edward, all these people who come on all the mm -hmm. time. It's like it like you know we're all friends. Yeah, like, and that's the thing. Yeah, any one of these people would, you know, would invite me to their home, probably. I think. Yeah, <laughs> and vice and vice versa. Yeah, and uh, and so that that's kind of that's pretty cool when you think about it, um, especially in this pandemic, which is like, yeah. well, hopefully we're on the trail end, but um, but you know, like the pandemic meant such a disconnect from traditional relationships that we had, right? Where you weren't maybe able to see friends and family. Um, I had, I don't know if you, uh, if you, anybody subscribed for that long, but I used to, my, my apartment here actually flooded. Um, and yeah, I love Lisa too, by the way. She is very sweet, by the way. She is very sweet. Um, but I, my apartment actually, uh, flooded. And so I had to move into a basement suite at like an Airbnb because they had to like gut my whole place. And it was a whole thing during this channel being around. And like, I'll tell you, like, that was, it was about 30 minutes down the road like so I didn't really have any it was during the pandemic I couldn't like it was around Christmas time we weren't allowed because we were in lockdown we couldn't like see any friends or family and my channel meanwhile was growing really really quickly and it was kind of a lifeline for me like I was able to connect with people real friends that I've never met in person but people that it's a relationship that's as meaningful uh yeah. to me that then then really cool. some of the in-person ones and for sure the ones that I got to see the most frequently um, yeah. especially like, you know, if I've seen people, especially if it's another YouTuber, because I've seen their videos and they've seen mine, like, it's kind of weird. It's like, I feel like I know you because we've spent hours together, but we haven't. <laughs> so it's weird, but <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It, it, you can absolutely build relationships through places like YouTube. And I think that, that, that knowing and trusting is why people come back to you. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I know your name there, Daryl. <laughs> Just kidding. It's Phil. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, I'm horrible with names usually, but I do my best, um, to, to, it seems to, to be, they seem to be chatting about Toronto in this section. There's a debate. Well, someone made a comment about Toronto Torontonians <laughs> are snooty. You know, I'll stick up for, uh, our friends in Toronto. Um, I, you know, I mean, I know snooty people in my community, so. Yeah. Well, Vancouver has a reputation for being snooty because we're like kind of West coast and we don't get the same 
weather yeah. and people think that everybody has their own thing except maritimers you guys are all obviously lovely but um oh yes but we but are. um i think toronto if you're not from canada toronto has a reputation of being like a little bit like where they're the center of the universe and so nothing else matters but toronto mm -hmm. and so everybody else um it's kind of almost like a new york situation like it's kind of all about them a little bit sometimes or maybe it feels that way i don't know right um but truthfully when you actually go to toronto it's actually very nice like the people yeah. there are nice the um the city is nice it's clean ish and it feels i don't know i like toronto there's lots going on i wouldn't i'm not gonna move there but it's a nice city i don't i'm i'm, I'm scared of cities so <laughs> oh, okay fair enough <laughs> stay in the woods <laughs> if you've been to halifax that's like that's about as much as i can handle Big city Halifax. When it, yeah. When it come, yeah, big city Halifax. Uh, they're wanting. They're trying to be a big city, for sure. It's growing quickly. Yeah, for you, oh, Halifax. Halifax is growing like crazy. Yeah, Helen, I look forward to you being here too. Helen comes on all the time. Nick, she's from uh, East Gippsland, Australia. I oh, definitely hello, have an invite to go hang out with Helen, Amy, and I. If we ever get to Australia, that's where we're going to go and visit. So I would love to go. People keep saying, like, I, I had this question once, and I, I didn't answer it the way I should have. People asked me once, like, in the Q&A, what place would you go to learn about design? And I, I think I might have said, like, Japan, or I might have said about, like, maybe, you know, Copenhagen or something. But for, you know, because I love, obviously, modern and Danish design, but, like, I think it's Australia. I think I would love to go yeah. and tour some Australian places because I love the design that's coming out of Australia right now. So maybe I'll come and say hello when I'm there. Amy and I want to just go. We just want to go to uh, Costa Rica. That's about that's about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll go there too. <laughs> <laughs> Not for design. It's just no, just for weather. funsies. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. Carol, you're happy in Freddie Beach, Fredericton, New Brunswick. Yes, Freddie Beach. They call it because there's no water there. Mm -hmm. It's not on the ocean. Uh, yeah. Trish, it's so fun having Nick on. His perspective is so interesting, and I love his kitchen. Cool. Uh, I seen your little Instagram. Uh, was it a story or a post? Oh, I, I don't you, know. You did your uh, your apartment tour? <laughs> no. <laughs> that just today. Oh my gosh, the apartment tour. You know, is I get as close as you're going to get. Well, oof. so here's the thing. I, that's probably the, that and the clock are the most common questions I get. So <laughs> the the thing is that the apartment tour. At first, I didn't do it because I didn't think anybody cared. Because again, it's important to note how quickly things move on YouTube. And what started out as like a few hundred people, they were. I was trying to just like get get people to connect with the knowledge that I was trying to share every week. And the tour didn't really add anything, right? It was just right. like, okay, who's this dude? I don't care about his apartment. Then the place flooded, and then. Obviously, I couldn't tour when the place flooded. And it was about four or five months where I was out. I saw someone here remembers that I was in that. Uh, someone right. uh, someone made fun of me, and it was hilarious. They said, why is this guy filming in a Holiday Inn? And I laughed because I was like, that's actually really good. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I couldn't obviously film then. And then I moved back in, and then I took a few weeks to get comfortable. And then the channel just became so much bigger. And I felt really right. overwhelmed at like what if this isn't good enough? Like, what if people aren't going to like my place? What if they've seen my living room because I've, I've let them in there. What if they don't like my bedroom? What if they think, oh, I kind of expected more out of Nick's bathroom? Or, you know, does anybody else expect better? And I just, I started doing all this like self-talk that no one said, but I yeah. kind of felt that pressure. And so I wanted just to take some time. And then eventually it just took time uh months just went on and i just came, became busy and then it became a thing where i was like maybe this is just you know all the rooms it's, it's a two-bedroom apartment there's basically an office which isn't that fun um and a, a bedroom and a couple of bathrooms I'm, I'm sort of like i don't really know necessarily the the incredible value that it would provide and just so it sort of felt like yeah. a private space that i didn't really want to share so what i've started to do is just do little mini tours on instagram and just post them to highlights it's kind of a way just to make people feel like I don't know. I did it, but not like Nick's. I didn't want to do this like Nick's YouTuber tour. And I also, you know what I really wanted to avoid? I'll tell you this. I didn't want to, I didn't want the reacts because what I, I had people, I'm not going to obviously uh, go to a thing. Like, like me. That's something I would like do. Like you, because this is 100% what you would do. <laughs> and I know it because <laughs> you would. You'd be like, reaction to Nick Lewis's kitchen. I don't like that Nick did this. Or Nick chose a stainless. Is, it, is this really what he, you oh, know? Man. I don't know. And you know it's coming. And I know it's coming because I know the game. And I'm I don't know. Right away. Yes. And I've done one react on my channel because it was like this guy in LA that did this stupid mansion and it was really hideous. And so I thought, hey, I can make fun of this. And 
And this guy was not a sympathetic character. So it was like, it felt, it felt safe to do a react, but I just right. find like, I've had, a, I've had react videos made out of my reaction, like to my videos. And there is something really odd. I'll tell you it's, it's really odd to watch a video of people reacting to you and for the purposes not to educate you or to interact with you, but to make fun of you to their audience and provide some right. sort of clicky thing. Now I get the YouTube game, but I'm also like, that just, I don't know if I want to deal with, you know, Paige Wassell, who I love and is a friend of mine, but you know, she's going to, I don't know if you know who she is, but she's going to do a react mm -hmm. video and other people, I'm not saying everybody's going to do a react video because I'm that important, yeah. but it'll happen. And I'm not sure. I'm like, I don't know if I just want to open myself up to that. So I thought, let's go low key. Um, Cause I've had react videos made on me and it's like, it's weird. It's weird. It's like, it's like walking into a party. This is how I described it to a friend. It's like walking into a party and as you're about to knock on the door, you can hear like 50 people in the room and you hear like, blah, 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 Mark Tobin. And then you just like start, everybody starts talking about you in the comment section. And right. you're like, do I want to walk into that party? Like knowing they're all talking about me. <laughs> I'm not sure I do. Um, and that's sort of how that felt. So I was like, I don't know if I'm going to do a, a video. I don't know if I want to open myself up to that. So that's why I've resisted the home tour. Good choice. Good choice. Is it a good choice? I think so. It's my choice. So I'm going to take yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm surprised now. Well, I mean, I'm not big enough, you know, yet, but my gallery wall is certainly open to have somebody just completely roast it. Um, <clears throat> I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I know I like, I understand also I've toyed with this as well, which is like, you do Nick make fun of stuff on your channel sometimes. So isn't this just fair play? And it is, but I also yeah. try to never make making fun of people personal. Right. Like I, I make fun of stuff, but stuff is not people. And if you, right. I try to be kind so that if you see yourself in that, then you, but it's never personal. And I, I never really go in. I try anyway to never go in and be like, so Mark Tobin's got this ugly, ugly <laughs> barn door. You guys would not believe. Like I would never do that. I would just say, I don't care for barn doors. And here's why, because you know, whatever. Um, I don't know. That's Maybe my it's ugly, really? Is it really. I don't ugly? actually. I'm just saying if I did, that would be rude. <laughs> and that would be mean. And I wouldn't do that. Um, so that's why I've, I've, I've only done yeah. one, one react video and it was fun, but it was, uh, I don't think it's going to be a, I, I wouldn't do it to someone that I think is going to see it. Cause I do think it's right. hard to see. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's, that's probably good advice. And we're all open to, I mean, I'm open to that. If someone was going to roast, not, I mean, I don't really do content that people would roast, but when I do stuff like, like that, that gallery wall, maybe someone could, but I mean, I specifically asked, please be kind to me. And this is my first attempt. I'm taking baby steps. So, yeah, you know, and I'm used to people saying all sorts of things about me on the internet. That's, that's, you know, I have a series where I take people's um, it's called roasting your subscribers homes, but it's gently, like I yep. put gently in the title yep. because we're gently. not, I'm not, it's not, you know, it's providing some nice kind feedback to hopefully help somebody and, and, and the audience to learn a little bit as well and have a bit of fun. Um, but I say in those videos at the beginning, like, you know, I see you in the comment section, 95% of you are love, 99% of you are lovely and supportive and whatever. But there are people that stumble across the videos and they're going to say, oh my God, those walls are absolutely hideous. And the person's going to see this video because I'd watch a video if it was me. It, you know, if you submit your space to be roasted by me, you're going to watch the video of it. Right. And I just think like it's not kind and there's enough rude people on the internet that I don't need my channel to be part of it. So I always say like, say what you want about me. Per like, I don't care. Like I've seen it all at this point, but yeah. don't go after people that are just normal people that don't ask for this. <laughs> You know, yeah, it's that, not even okay that's that you're rude to me. I just, you know, I just tune it out. I don't read as many comments as people think I probably do. Uh, Kelly, uh, send me some pictures. I'll roast your kitchen. Oh, it won't be nice. See, that's why I don't do it. No, no, it Kelly. Be nice no. at all. <laughs> I'll just, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I think. You know, but again, like, and that's the thing. I use photos as examples, but it's not people. Actually, that's not true, Mark. One time, a guy emailed me, and he was like, "Hey, so you used my photo in one of your videos, and you made fun of it." Just to let you know, I don't care, and I thought it was funny. And I was like, "He's a good sport," but like, yeah. normally, you you got to be careful. Yeah, I wouldn't want to make anyone feel bad either. I mean, no, it's even all my talk care. about OTRs, you know, it's all in in good fun, um, and and hopefully, I come across that way. So that's that's always good. I hope so, but I, I think so. It's like you, you know, and I'm self, I try to be self deprecating on my channel as well. Like I make fun of myself for like, you know, a lot of things that are in my background. Like sometimes I'll make fun of something and be like, you know, something impractical is 
big dumb clocks that don't have numbers on them. Oh, you know, like the one I have right behind me. Like you sometimes have to make fun of yourself because that's disarming and it shows people that you're, you know, you can give it as much as you can kind of take it. But being on the internet, you're also taking it a lot because there's a lot of people commenting a lot on the things we do. But yeah. that comes with the territory. S speaking to this comment, Mark Tobin has the best eyebrows. Um, thank you, Jed. Uh, that, that, that came because I did a video with... Um, uh, not with, but I did a video about Ikea versus Home Depot, ready to assemble mm. cabinets. And the exposure on my camera, there was something going on with it that was really bad. And so I had to like color, and I mean, I use iMovie, right? So it's like, I don't mm. have a lot of color correction opportunities. So I had to like just massage it the best I could, but it like, it like basically erased my, most of my eyebrows. And so most of the video comments were just about my eyebrows. <laughs> No, we can't like, that's seriously what people i know and so like, and people who think there's also can i just say it, it something weird happens in youtube where like people stop talking to you and they start talking about you yeah and that's what i think is really weird it's like when you're a when you've got you know 100 subscribers and you're you're kind of a little bit on the the smaller side of the youtube channel game um People kind of go like, and this sometimes still happens to me, but they'll go like, hey, Mark, I have a question. In this part of the video, you said this. But then there's a point where they start going, hey, Mark, does anybody else think this Mark guy doesn't really know what he's talking about? Or, you know what I mean? Like, And then all of a sudden, yeah. they're not talking to you. They're talking about you. And that is very weird because yeah. then you're like, wait, am I just on stage talking to an audience and they're just whispering in the too. comment section and I can, I can hear them. Um, and I think also people put stuff on the internet. Like there's a, a pretty, you might not know her cause she's a totally different niche, but there's a YouTuber called Sarah Dietschy. I don't know if you know her. Yeah, she I does know Sarah Dietschy. Yeah. So she does a lot of tech stuff and she watches yeah. my channel and we're sort of friends on Instagram now. Cool. Um, but she like we've messaged each other or whatever, but early on she tweeted something like, hey, what is with these YouTubers with these lenses that have their background so blurry that I can't see anything in their background, especially when it's an interior design channel? Right. And my friend screenshotted it and sent it and was like, I think she's talking about you. And she's absolutely talking about me because <laughs> I just bought a new lens and I turned the exposure to a point where like, I thought it was cool, but yeah. it was from a tech perspective, like apparently not cool. And um you'd think this tweet would never be seen by the person who sees it, but it is, it's, it's, you yep. put it out there on the internet. I may see it and don't get me wrong. I mean, I was actually helpful because I ended up just changing my settings, but that's an example of like, people will see this stuff on the internet. So I, I do think, especially as creators or people that are, you know, on a, have a little bit of a sort of platform that, you know, we have to sort of set an example because you, you get the audience you deserve. Can I just, oh, you know, for sure. yeah. you get the yeah. audience you deserve. Yeah. So if you're going to be kind and you're going to be, I gotta, you know, you, you, you're going to attract audience. kind people. Yeah. And yeah. I do too. I have I a great really audience do. because yeah. um, why well, I, I hope that they understand when I'm kidding and they, yeah. they, they understand when I'm being sassy yeah. just because it, yeah, for, for the right. jokes, but yeah. I'm hopefully it's, being respectful. Right. Yeah. And it's, you know, because your personality comes out in that. And um, like, I'd say like, you know, most of the comments that I receive are, are always, you know, nice. Yeah. And that, and not, you know, that's fine. Like whether they're nice or not, like that's, I don't do them to get nice comments, but I don't mind, I don't mind getting them. Like, you know, it's not no. like I, I wish they were all bad comments. Um, and construction, criti constructive criticism is great. Or Nick, I want a clarification. You said this at this point, but yeah, some of these are not, some of them are not constructive. They're just, no. And like someone said, that comes with the job. If you're going to put yourself out there, especially online, get ready for it. Cause that just, that just happens. So yeah, that's fine. Um, I won't, what time is it? Well, we got a lot. Whoa, whoa, we're way over time. That's fine. We're a lot, Did you have we're, any, we're, any more um, designing we'll, questions you we'll, want to throw we'll out there? Call it here lightning round. <laughs> lightning round. All right, here we'll give. I uh, don't do lightning round. I have. I'm too long winded, by the way, for lightning round. Okay. But I'll do my I'll, best. Um, we did corner panel handles. Uh, um, give me your quick thoughts about mood boards. What's the deal? Oh, what, what's a yeah. mood board? Can I learn how to do that? Yeah, mood or like, you know, a concept board, I think is, yeah, you totally can. This is the thing that, sorry, this is not lightning round. Um, you know, <laughs> it was, I didn't realize that a lot, I, Mom, interior designers work, absolutely yeah. use them, right? Like they absolutely use them. And they, it's like I said earlier, but like steal like an artist. It's like, it's finding inspiration from not even just design, but from fashion, from lifestyle, whatever. 
trying to understand sort of the mood that you're creating. And then the mood board can evolve. It can start out really abstract. Again, you know, fashion, whatever. And then it sort of morphs. I like to think them uh, think of them as a little bit more of a, uh, a board that moves with you a little bit more. And you can start attaching like specific furniture pieces. Um, I love Milano. It's like my favorite way to use to do this because you can like link to things. You have a pin extension you can link online and save them to your mood board. Not sponsored. I do love them though. And uh, and they, they're really great at like grabbing all these images and bringing them into one place. And then you can start to add colors and do lots of different fun things. So yeah, mood boards are great. Okay, cool. Uh, let's say, what about, uh, what's the deal with pot fillers? Yes or no? No. <laughs> Double Island. That's a lightning yes or round. No. no um, ah, okay, I wasn't prepared for actual lightnings. Um, okay, Double Islands, no. I hate those two. Everybody knows that. They're excessive. We, they're um, ostentatious. They're unnecessary. Just get a large island that fits your space or your kitchen. It, you're, you're not working in a commissary kitchen. It's a I home. love it. Farmhouse sinks. Fine. I know I'm known oftentimes because I had a few videos that blew up where I made fun of farmhouse. I don't like kitschy farmhouse. People forget that. I don't like when okay. farm. I do like some, especially if it has a sense of place of like you're actually in a farm or like a rural area, even better. Mm -hmm. But I do like, I don't mind shiplap. I don't mind farmhouse sinks. I don't mind like the big farmhouse table. Um, I don't mind some farmhouse details if that's your design style and that's what you love. Right. I think that they can be great. But what I don't love is when it's like, you know, too kitschy. And it's just like, you know, the obviously the live, laugh, love, love energy, which is gets made fun of. Favorite paint Nick, color? Paint. Um, simply white. Okay, nice. Uh, simply oh, white, the one Benjamin the paint color is behind you. Oh, this, Hail Navy, Benjamin Moore. Cool. Um, and somebody had asked this a fun. few times. I can't see it right now. They want to know how your house is coming along. Uh, Raymond. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let me tell you guys real quick. So um, first of all, inflation sucks, uh, but whatever. People have bigger problems in the world. No one needs to hear me whine about inflation. That's fine. But here's the thing. I just found out breaking news, breaking news this week is uh, we found out that the, the, like the sewer area the the what's it called the septic tank or whatever the yep. the provincial government and the developer are figuring out i'll just call it figuring out what to do and they're therefore not issuing building permits for the area because they're like our government and the um developer is that owned that, that built this system are fighting and um yeah. that is awful so basically as of right now i actually can't build um for that reason oh, wow. but that is it will will hopefully be resolved it's kind of hard because obviously like i don't want to talk about that necessarily on my channel because i don't want it to be perceived as like i don't know do you know what i mean right. youtuber yep. puts pressure on government to issue him a yeah, building yeah, yeah. permit like that's not a headline that i want like i don't need to do that i'm hoping it just resolves I itself work. and that we work through the right channels but it'll take it'll take time so i can't um, build but i'm thinking we'll start building I'm talking, I would like to think maybe spring of next year is the goal. Ooh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there's an end in sight. That's the thing with building, you know, especially when we're waiting for permits. <laughs> to be honest with you, what I should have done is I shouldn't have announced it on YouTube probably. Like I shouldn't have even right. said that I was building, but I'm so like, this is what's happening in my life, you guys, that I just felt like I really had to share it. And I was super excited and I did, and I'm sharing a real journey. My hope was, was that in three years, someone's going to stumble on this series and watch like 18 videos and go, Oh my God, right. that was like an HGTV show. And right, I loved yeah. it because I watched the whole sequence from start to finish and loved it. That's kind of the, that was the vision. And so I thought the more real time I got with my updates, the more fun that would feel. It doesn't feel so fun. So I'm hoping that when it's all done, it'll be it'll be amazing because I have some yeah. great plans for the series, but it's just gonna That's take cool. time. Well, that'd be fun. That'd be good. Hopefully it happens sooner than later. Yeah. Soapstone countertops. Um so well, so honed or I guess like honed or sometimes I see a lot of leathered finishes on soapstone, mm -hmm. and that can be, I think, a challenge on countertops um honed or polished can be cool um yeah i think they're fine i love every natural stone it's very porous though isn't soapstone very very porous it's not used a whole lot no I, for, it's, yeah, you're... in my in my like demographic i guess almost never yeah, yeah it's it's not a common one it's also very soft so i think there's some issues around 
Um, I don't think it's porous. I think it's one of the more non-porous stones. Issues with the hardness of the, soapstone. I think it's well because they make. They, I know they like they make sinks for, from it. Um, so I'm thinking if they're making a sink from just the stone, it's it's not uh, it's not reinforced like you know a sill granite sink is with with any kind of um, polymer. Um, you know, it's it's pretty non-porous. I, I'm, if I'm off there, someone can let me know. But um, yes, I don't know what the deal is, why it's not as popular. It might be the price or the availability. Yeah, I've seen, I mean, um, I went to go check out some slabs not long ago and like there was a beautiful piece of soapstone that was like black, but it was like green veining. Mm. Yeah, someone says this in soapstone too soft. That was kind of my thought as well, but... Yeah. Um, no, and it was, it was gorgeous, but again, like, would I use it for like, I don't know, go to a fabricator and get it put into like an end table or something? Yeah, for sure. But would yeah. I do it on kitchen countertops? Like, I'm not sure that that's what I would do or yeah. even maybe, but, um, yeah, I would say, actually I have a question for you. Can I ask you a question, mm -hmm. Mark? Do you, what do you think about these new, I mean, I, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Tough Skin, T-U-F-F-S-K-I-N. They have reached out to me a whole bunch because they really want uh, me to talk about them more, but I I've never firsthand had any experience with them. I'm curious if you have, basically it's like, you can get it in a mat, you can get it in a, in a, in a glossy sort of polished. It's not polished because, and basically it's like a physical barrier that goes over top. So it's super clear. You can't really see it. Tough skin mm -hmm. specifically as a brand, apparently they claim as a, you know, they started in Vegas. And the reason of course they started in Vegas is because all the hotels wanted to use natural stone because it's beautiful and they right. money is no object when you're a casino and so they just absolutely go with these like palaces made of marble but then of course i don't know if <laughs> vegas people are not the best and most you know they, they don't take care of your marble very well when they're drunk and um stumbling around the the the, the, the poker tables so they um they sort of what they've done is they've created this like physical barrier that goes over top and that okay. way you're able to get like a natural stone, like a marble or whatever. And it resists it, etching as well as yeah. staining. So you can have lemon juice, ketchup, red wine, whatever, spill it on a piece of marble, wipe it up. They claim that so it's I, I just Googled it. I'm sorry. So no, yeah, it's uh, quite I, had, easy I hadn't heard of it. It looks interesting. So it, it's there's a spray. This is like the literally you have to get a guy from Tough Skin coming in to basically put this over top of your countertops. Yeah, um, I'm really it, intrigued it by it because so, mm -hmm. it is expensive. Sometimes it can be like, I don't even, I don't want to quote a price and say, because I, I really don't really know right now. I haven't had conversations okay. in that, that in depth with them, but, um, my understanding is it's expensive, but if you're going to be spending, you know, all this money on a natural stone, like a white, you know, Carrera marble or something, um, using something like this could be an interesting way if you've got the budget for it to build that into your budget to seal your countertops but like not just like a spray sealer but like a physical barrier yeah. that goes it, yeah. they said it's like a contact lens over top of your eye like, it, it looks like it doesn't look like anything if you look up close yeah. you'll see it like a contact lens you would but yeah. it otherwise provides sort of a physical barrier have you do you have any experience with that or seen this no i'm just looking at here it says it's a proprietary stone laminate interesting made of high-tech polyester that is gas permeable but liquid impermeable. Our hard coat technology resists scratching and provides a long product life. Tough skin adhesive is designed specifically to work with stone. That's interesting. Um, check that out. So, you can Google it, Tough Skin. Um, have a look at it. I, yeah, I've, I mean, I've heard of it, so I'll have to check that out. Right now, they have given me a piece, like I've asked them for a piece of stone and they've, they've given it to me. I just haven't really done anything with it because oh, the house nice. is a bit on hold. They've given me a yeah. piece of stone and they put tough skin on half of it. And the idea is that I can go with ketchup, turmeric, I can go in with some whatever, red wine, spill it on the like tough skin and then the not tough skin side and see what happens to it. So I'm going to wait and film that and do that hmm. on my for my host series because, you know, it's great that they want to work with me, but obviously I'm not going to put it on my natural stone if it sucks and doesn't work. So I'm going to like yeah. feel it out. Funny they, haven't, it. Uh, funny they haven't reached out to me. No, maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll send them your way because you can do some testing and do something with it because oh, I would love like to hear your thoughts and I'm sure your audience would too. Because That it's, sounds interesting. Yeah, because I mean, porcelain is yeah. obviously another option and quartz is another mm. option, but this is like a way porcelain. to use. Um, yeah, because you worked with Infinity, right? That's yeah, I've, yeah, they've reached uh, out to me some, too. They've, I've had some 
Well, I've, I communicate all the time with infinity, just, you know, over email, nothing, uh, yeah, nothing on the channel in, in terms of like any kind of sponsorship or anything like that, but they've been very kind to send me samples and, um, and uh, I've had to look at them. We, I had them on the live stream. I did a live oh, reveal, cool. opened up a box of samples on the live stream once. And um, yeah, so that, that was cool. I, I am very intrigued by, by porcelain. I mean, too. Uh, I think that if the fabrication costs and the, the, the fabricators themselves and the skill involved in, in installing it and fabricating it can get up to par with, you know, what quartz is, mm -hmm. I, I think. And, and the price, I mean, the, I don't know, the price point might be a little tricky, but I'm, I'm really curious to see what porcelain will do. But it's beautiful. Yeah. In the market. It's, it is beautiful. I love it. Yeah. yeah. They're out of, they're so out of um, Italy and they were like, yeah, we'd love Italy, to Italy, yeah. work with you. And I was like, you know what? If you buy me a ticket to Italy, I will do a video on you, my friends. I will be you like live, li live from Italy. We're learning about porcelain countertops. Um, <laughs> Happily, yeah. I will be there, but uh, yeah. you know what? They haven't, they haven't given me the flight yet, so me that neither, hasn't actually happened. They haven't reached out, but I might, I might ask I'm, for one just so we have to do that. Oh, I mean, I have an open well. invite, but no one's paying for a ticket, so yeah, open invite. No one's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's ultimately, who puts their credit card down, but they haven't yet. But you know, one day, but yes, Bluebell 1920, it sounds like a game changer. I know, I know. It's so you know what? If you guys know Arvin Alano, um. Arvin is another YouTuber. He actually, they reached out to me because Arvin and I know each other. And he, Arvin, did tough skin on his kitchen countertops. If you saw any of his kitchen stuff that he did like six months ago, a year ago, he did tough skin because he's from Vegas. It's all coming together. And so Arvin from, um, so, so yeah, Arvin did that in his, in his house in Vegas. And so that's really um that's really interesting so he he i actually asked him off the record and uh and he said he really does like it hmm. so it's worth looking into that's cool i'll have to uh stay tuned i'm going to research that a little more because that sounds something that's yeah no i know, met with the team they're based out the canadian operation is based here in vancouver they came out met oh, wow. with me and uh i was i was impressed with the product but i want to put it through its paces because yeah. you know if you're spending all Long this term. money on stone like beautiful marble stone countertops, which I'm sorry, I love quartz. I love porcelain. Both are great. But natural stone is just, there's a beauty that comes from natural stone that you just can't replicate. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's good replications for sure, but it's just always going to be, you know, natural stone always wins for me. And it's just art. It's like, vision, it's beautiful art in my opinion. That's why I love it. But again, you know, how do you protect that? And I, I just, I'm not that clean, you guys. I just know that I'm going to spill some red wine and I'm just going to like go to bed and there's going to be a red wine stain. I'm going to wake up in the morning and, you know, I just don't want tens of thousands Regret. of dollars worth of marble countertop stained. So this is an interesting alternative that I'm, I'm looking into. I'll send them your way. Laminate all the way, P-Man. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Laminate. Go for it. Because you know what? I have laminate, and I. I just oh, you're a lover it. of laminate, aren't you? I like That's laminate. Right. I have I have no problem. I I shouldn't say that. I have a problem with laminate in the sense that you know you have a seam, especially if you have a miter cut. That's always an issue, and I'm very strict with my family to be like, no water can go near that. That's off limits. Don't even look at it. Um, but aside from that, like laminate's not too bad. Yeah, for what I it is. I've I've for the price you're paying. Yeah, I have actually said that, I think, I, you know, in one video, I can't remember what I say, but I think in one video, I pointed out that, like, if you're going to go laminate, I personally, and again, you might be insulted by this, I don't know, Mark, but, like, I personally like the laminates that are not trying to be something that they're not. So, like, if you're going to put in, like, a whatever, a white countertop in a white laminate, then just let it be a white countertop. Don't the marble effect stuff, a lot of the stuff that fakes trying to be something else. I'm usually I proceed with caution. Now I know quartz is honestly in a way trying to be a natural stone and it's not, but it's a really good, it's a really good fake. Um, but the laminate effect stuff, did you put marble effect uh, countertops in your kitchen? Is this where I stuck my foot in my mouth? Is this when that happened? Don't worry about it. Don't oh, worry wouldn't be the first. Wouldn't be the first time. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> so um, I have a burn door as well, you know. So you realize that with my channel now, I can't go to anybody's house. Like no one wants me. <laughs> no. no one invites me over. Like everyone's just like, don't use me for content. And I'm like, well, I'll see. I'll be inspired. I'll never call you out by name unless it's my mom or my sister. Those are the two that I call out. 
because they deserve it. And that's fun for me. But yeah. um, everybody else is just nervous to have me over. And I always have to say, I promise you, I will not take photos. LOL, Marquez fake marble. Oh, thanks, Carol, for clarifying. <laughs> I love it. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Listen, the, the kitchen is about having food made. That's the primary purpose. So as long as that's food true. comes out of the kitchen, I don't care what countertop it comes over, get me the food. Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> awesome i think uh well we're gonna call it we'll call it uh we'll call it on that yeah on my fake my we'll fake call, marble. call it on your fake marble account adopt. i want to mention everybody just before we go um this is something that's coming up my wife is um can you see that no kind of it's uh it's called eva soap co so my wife is starting um an all-natural soap company i'm gonna i don't want to I'm not promoting this right now, but because we don't have all the products made, but uh, we have matcha scrub, um, green tea matcha scrub, and we have a shampoo bar, 15 other products. I'm going to talk about them a little bit more in the future. I just want my family here on the live to to be in the know that uh, this is something that we're talking about. So this is a, a cream shampoo. This is empty because it's just a case. But uh, they've been working diligently on making these products, and we're going to be uh, putting them out online and uh, they might become a brand sponsor to my channel. So you might see them on there Love at that. some point. So it's all natural products. And my wife as a professional hairdresser and now uh, master stylist and instructor, it's her really her passion to, you know, to create products that are um, friendlier on you, the person on, on your body and just overall. So no harsh chemicals and all that kind of stuff. So, so when's that's going to be coming channel? up in the future. Pardon me? When's her YouTube channel? Are we going to see her? Uh, that's in the works. So yeah, we're working yeah. on all that. We just got the, the these things ordered and and we have product being made all the time. So this was just something that was born out of uh, just her love for for that industry and the desire to create something that was um, that was just better. You know, I say better, but in, in quotation marks, but um, just, yeah, better, better than just the harsh chemicals that you're getting with, with, you know, highly manufactured products not that all of them are but a mm -hmm, lot of them mm -hmm. a lot of them are so just want to mention it eva soap co you can uh, go on to instagram if you want and you can see some of the some of their content they're just starting to get rolling but this is something that we're really excited about and um i thought i'd share it with my family here on the live stream because if you're watching this in replay right now you've been on here for almost two hours and you're you're a real gem if that's the case yeah. so i do appreciate it so keep an eye out for that. I'll talk about all this a little bit more as the as time goes on. I just want to give you a heads up. So um, Tobin's are going to take over the world. Yeah, I was um, going to say you're both entrepreneurial. Yeah, Love we'll that. take over uh, the Maritimes. We'll start with there. Yeah. Nick, it's been really great having you on tonight. Super fun. Uh, Thank you so much. Thanks for reaching out. Really appreciate it. And and uh, yeah, so this was great. Uh, maybe in the future we can do it again sometime and, and chat some more. Sounds good. I know, okay. I know everyone would love it. So everyone, um, so Nick, you want to say anything, say something to the MTKD community before we go? Any um, parting words? Oh my gosh, what do I, what do I have? Uh, don't put fake marble. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, no, I mean, you know, you just said, you, thank you for having me on here. I mean, you, you do such a great job. As I said, you really are function first and I always appreciate that. And I think your audience appreciates that. And um, I'll be watching more of your content and you might see me in the comment section. So Check Ooh. me out there. Sounds good. Well, just stay away from that gallery wall one. I just, you know. Is that in the background of some of your videos? I'm excited. I'm for um, sure going to comment. No, I'm but there's sure, just a, a specific video on that uh, that I did. Oh, so, okay. I'll have to yeah, go back and look for it. I think it's titled like, I. it's it's very recent and terrifying. So <laughs> I look forward to it. <laughs> anyway. Well, thanks for the wonderful time. It. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Awesome. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll touch base at some point over Instagram and uh I'm always around. And say hi. Cool. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Bye. That was awesome. I really appreciate Nick being on. And uh, thank you to everyone who, you know, gave me the push to, to say, hey, reach out to Nick. He, he'd definitely do it. So that was that was pretty cool. I'm going to go. Yeah, thank you for uh, the kind words here. Um, Deb saying love natural products. Um, really cool. This is something that we're really excited about. And uh you know, it's off brand for my channel. I understand that, but it's my family. So, you know, I want to just promote this and it's something that we really care about. So uh, we're going to, we're going to see a little bit more of that in the future. 
everybody, thanks so much for being on this long. We've been had a, a great uh, crowd on for the whole night. And uh, it's been really fun. So again, thanks to Nick. Thanks to all you for watching this. And we will uh, I'll roll the end credits here as we go. Make sure you uh, leave a like on the video and all that stuff. And in, in on Saturday, before I go, my uh, architectural design did a video where they Three interior designers designed the same kitchen. I designed the same kitchen as well. And I talked about all four kitchens, their three designers and mine. Interesting little take on my perspective on how I would have designed it from a kitchen designer standpoint. Other than that, thanks so much for being on tonight. God bless y'all. Have a great week.